Finally here, live <laughs> from the fan foyer. Oh my gosh, that was a stressful start today. Nothing like uh, just hitting go on the live stream and then finding suddenly that, um, yeah, nothing's working. <laughs> so a great start, fantastic start. Hi everybody, thanks for those of you that were sitting on there waiting and answering my chat. It's good to be here with you. I'm just gonna go down here and um, as per <laughs> Somebody else's suggestion, um, Matt, get a screen that you can see the the chat on. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run this on a on another screen so I can actually see see the chat going on live uh, and uh, not have uh, some of those challenges that uh, that we had before. So anyway, let's see, let's see if this is actually actually gonna work. Yes, it is. Excellent. Good. Welcome, people. Hi, Ghostbusters collector. Hi, Stephanie. How are you? Uh, welcome to the chat. Um, today we're here to talk about anything you like, really. Um, we've been talking a lot about Ghostbusters, but um, I uh, ran a poll on the channel recently, and um, uh, people said, hey, you know, I, we're interested in Back to the Future as well as Ghostbusters, and there were a couple of other things as well that, uh, that people were interested in. And as you know, this channel isn't only Ghostbusters, there's a whole bunch of other stuff as well. So, um, the fandom foyer is a place to chat about that stuff. That's what um, I do these lives for. So let's just chat and talk about some of the things that we love, uh, particularly the fandoms we love. We can talk about Ghostbusters tonight. We can talk about Back to the Future. We can talk about any of those cool kind of 80s, early late 70s, early 80s uh, fandoms that began back then and, and that are still alive and well now. Um, uh, hi. Tsukiyomi. I hope I said that correctly. If I didn't uh, spell it phonetically, <laughs> I will try and pronounce it properly. How is it going? It's going good. Thank you. Thank you for joining the live. Stephanie saying that uh, Stephanie's well. Uh, yes, I am well. Thank you. I'm well now. The stress of trying to go live has ended and we are now live. I feel much happier and much more <laughs> comfortable. Stephanie's saying that uh, they love both Ghostbusters and Back to the Future. You are in the right place then, uh, this evening. <laughs> That's good. Tuskanomi, I said it right, good, <laughs> great, thank you very much. Um, um, and so, like I said, uh, if, um, if you have things you wanna discuss, questions for me, uh, things that you'd like to discuss with the group about some of these fandoms, now is the time uh, to throw those things into chat. Um, and if you missed, I did a live stream this week from, uh, from New York. Again, I'm, I'm starting to make that a tradition because as some of you know, I work in New York City and I um, have the opportunity to be close to some of these cool locations. And so I went to the New York Public Library this week and did a live from the library from the location that they um, recreated, I'm going to call it, in Frozen Empire because they didn't um, obviously use the New York location in the movie. If you didn't know that, that's okay, now you do. Uh, they shot uh, that in a studio in New York. Um, okay, Ghostbusters Collector, I'm gonna try and read it from here. Uh, do you think the studio would have been wiser to stick with a budget similar to that of Afterlife when making Frozen Empire? Wow, that is a great question. I, I think we'll have to see, right? I, I think that um, it depends on how they spent the budget. <laughs> is is a, is a, one of the things I would think because the budget goes on a bunch of different stuff. Obviously, um, the budget goes on the star power that you bring to a movie. So they broadened that star power in this movie. They had a wider range of folks. So they obviously would have had to have paid more for those people to be in the movie. Um, they obviously did a lot of visual effects work that went on after the film happened. Um, yeah, I think that probably based on the, you know, reasonable success of Afterlife, they thought, well, we can bump the budget up. Um, I think we just have to see how the movie does, um, you know, over the next few weeks. Now, it's, it came out in Brazil today. It came out in Paris, or in France, I should say, today. Uh, so we'll have to see how, how it does. Um, but it's, I think it's a really, really good question, Ghostbusters Collector, and, uh, and a relevant one, considering how the film's doing right now. Oh, Stephanie said that uh, they missed the stream in New York. Sorry about that, but you know what? You can see it. <laughs> it's, it's, I know it's not the same as joining a live 
live. That's much more fun. Um, but it is up there, and I go and see the two lions from uh, Frozen Empire. I go and, uh, you know, have a chat with them and, you know, pass the time of day with them. <laughs> so you can see me doing that. Um, and I, you know, as always, when I'm on the streets of New York, get in the way of uh, people trying to take uh, photos. Uh, the, the locations, um, I was definitely said that they watched it after. Awesome. <laughs> That's great, Stephanie. Um, so, Skunami saying, so, have you thoroughly read the Spengler journal that came with the HasLab Proton Pack? You know what, I haven't, because I don't have a HasLab Proton Pack. I'm actually making a Proton Pack of my own. Um, so, um, I haven't read that. But um, now you've mentioned it, um, I should read it. <laughs> that would be a good idea to do that. Um, and if there's something really cool that you think I should uh, read or cover um, when when looking at that, um, I will I will happily do so. Um, cool, good. So yeah, um, that live that I did uh, this week was um, yeah it was from uh, the library, like I said. And I foolishly asked the question, does anyone have any questions about the library? And then people asked me questions that I couldn't answer, like how old was the library? <laughs> when was it built? Uh, but then we kind of got onto a little bit of a discussion uh, in chat and people went to Google and we found some answers. Um, and and it, was, it was kind of fun to discuss some of that stuff about the library as a location that was in two, two Ghostbusters movies. So, you know, that's good stuff. Now, I think, Stephanie, it was you that said uh, you like Back to the Future and Ghostbusters. Um, tell me in chat what you like about about those franchises and, and why. Uh, the Hunter, what's up? Um, I give a shout out to Europe. Welcome to the chat. And depending on what part of Europe you're in, I know that Ghostbusters has been released, uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire has been released um, in France. This weekend. It comes out this weekend. So if you haven't seen it yet and you get to see it, that's fantastic. So yeah, um, and we're talking all things all things geeky. Uh, you know, this chat is called the Fandom Foyer, where geeks gather. Um, so we're here to chat about any of those things you want to chat about. Um, I'm in my geeky basement, surrounded by geekery, <laughs> as I like to call it. So if you want to talk about any of this stuff as well, uh, and if you want to ask me any questions about uh, what I'm into and the fandoms that I'm into, I'm very happy to ask, answer those those questions. Uh, Tanobi's asking, uh, saying, uh, the journal has a lot of good information in it um, as to Egon's thoughts about everything that happened and experimental gear. Okay, that sounds good. Sounds like as I'm building a proton pack, that might be worth, uh, worth reading. <laughs> Uh, the Hunter's saying that uh, they haven't seen Ghostbusters yet, but in the next few days, not many people are excited to see it since the last one flopped. Oh, really? The uh, Afterlife flopped in Europe? I didn't know that it did. I, I was in Europe when it... when it. Oh, well, I wasn't in Europe when it came out. It was here after it came out. Um, I don't... I, maybe, maybe... I don't know if you're talking about the 2016 one, um, uh, but maybe, maybe something happened where you are in Europe that I'm not aware of. Um, so yeah, let me know, let me know in the chat if you know more than I do, which, which is the point of this, because people out there probably know more than I do about some of these things. Um, uh, oh, uh, definitely not with <laughs> William Atherton whatsoever. Wow, that is quite a long username right there. Um, and yes, it is a TARDIS that you see up there in the background. Yes, I have been a long time Doctor Who fan. From the OG series. Yes, for, for a long, long time. So Stephanie's saying, for Ghostbusters, I remember watching it with my family. My sister, Tina, got me started on it again. Um, Back to the Future, also one that I grew up with. Yeah, okay, and so uh, similar for me, uh, I had some, um, oh, and your nep nephew is in the chat. That's cool, welcome, Stephanie's nephew. Good to have you here. Say hi every, to, to those guys. Um. And if you're just arriving, welcome. Um, we're here to chat. So if you've got questions uh, about any fandoms and you want to talk about those things, um, this channel has done a lot of stuff on Ghostbusters. I was at the premiere of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and have been doing a lot of Ghostbusters coverage over the past 
uh, month, month and a half. Um, but also into lots of other franchises and lots of other things um, that aren't just Ghostbusters. You will notice the Jurassic Park here. You will notice the Back to the Future here. Um, so if you want to talk about any of those movies or chat about any of those things or talk about anything that's in the background here and ask me um, about the fandoms that I'm into, I'm very happy to answer those questions uh, for you. Uh, Ghostbusters Collector, what's the best Ghostbusters fan fiction you've read? Dude, I don't think, I don't think I've read any Ghostbusters fan fiction. I'm trying to think if I have, but I haven't. So I'll ask the question back to you. What is the best Ghostbusters fan fiction you have read and why was it so good? And um, if it's so good, where can I find it and read it? <laughs> uh, is my question back to you. Um, for me, um, my love of Ghostbusters started with the first movie uh, that I absolutely loved. And in fact, I wonder if I can find it up here. It's going to be hard to remove from the geekery behind me. But I have some, some Ghostbusters paraphernalia back here um, that, you know, is worth sharing. And, and maybe some of you that have been around long enough have got some of this as well. But these are some of the original uh, baseball cards uh, from, from Ghostbusters 2. Baseball cards? They're not baseball. <laughs> They're Ghostbusters cards. I meant bubblegum cards um, that I have knocking around at the back here. That I actually saw Ghostbusters 2 when I was on, because as you can tell from my accent, those of you that are new here, uh, I'm from the UK, but I live in the US. And I came uh, to the US on a vacation with my family and saw Ghostbusters 2 in theatres um, here in the US before anyone in the UK. Because back in those days, and actually it's still the same for those folks that um, uh, are in chat from, from mainland Europe, there's a delay, and there, and there was even longer delay uh, years ago between the release of a movie here in the United States and the release of a movie in Europe. And part of that is because, as I'm sure you're well aware, when you release a movie in Europe, um, there are other countries that have the movie dubbed into their own language. And they actually have um, people who play famous actors' uh, voices. So if you're in another country um, and, you know, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger is a, a character in a movie, the same voice actor plays Arnold Schwarzenegger's voice in every movie. So you have to bring all of those voice actors together um, and you have to uh, go through the process of getting the movie dubbed and... In some, in some ways, re-scripted, right? Because um, the dialogue, the jokes, all those kind of things that make sense in English don't necessarily make sense in those other languages. So they don't just get uh, translated, they have to be interpreted. And sometimes new jokes have to be written that work in that language. Especially if you imagine like a pun uh, in English, a pun in English is not gonna go over well in another language because the pun won't work. Um, and you know, and again, it, it, so it's a whole process. So that delay of taking a movie from the US and putting it into other languages, and again, not just, you know, um, over in Europe, but also in South America, takes some time to happen. And so um, what used to happen was the UK, which is obviously, you know, in that area in Europe, um, would also get the same delay so they would go to that whole territory at once so even though the movie was ready to release in the uk um you'd have to wait sometimes six months so i actually saw star wars episode one uh here in the us uh, six months before anyone saw it in england and the same thing with ghostbusters 2 i saw it six months before anyone in britain so i was able to be uh the king of spoilers <laughs> to my friends uh but i wasn't it was hard you had to wait for six months to tell anybody anything um so let me let me grab let me grab this let's see if the camera can catch me again there it is all right ghostbusters collector is um responding to my question ghostbusters awakening apparently good fan fiction um and let's see, uh, you saw Ghostbusters 2 December of 89. I remember queuing up outside the ABC cinema in Ealing in the freezing cold. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, you're dead right. So Ghostbusters 2 came out in December in the UK and in the summer in the US, uh, which is how I got to see it early. Um, and I, I, I had... I had these... Um, I had these... I bought these back with me to the UK, these... Um, cards 
they not collected in Britain, so they didn't really mean anything to any of my friends at the time. I thought they were super cool, and I would show them to people. And in fact, for a long time, they still smelled of the bubble gum <laughs> when you take them out of the packet. Um, but yeah, so um, there was that big long delay um, when we used to get used to get the movies. Uh, th uh, thanks for sharing that, Ghostbusters collector. Um, and you know, depending on where you're where you're from in the world. Let me know in chat, when was the last time, uh, sorry, when was <laughs> the time that you saw any of those Ghostbusters movies? What, what, did you see them on home video? Did you see them on TV? Did you see them in the theater? And what was your experience uh, when you saw those things? And which was the first Ghostbusters movie you ever saw? Because not everybody uh, saw um, the original Ghostbusters first. In fact, a lot of the, the folks that uh, are good friends of mine that I hang out with, um, Nick and Greg, who are part of the Ecto-1 and J team, uh, that have a replica Ecto-1 that I hang out with, their memory of Ghostbusters was the cartoon. So that's how they got into Ghostbusters first. They watched the real Ghostbusters on TV, and then uh, they saw Ghostbusters 2 in theaters. And so that was their way in. I saw Ghostbusters in, uh, Ghostbusters first, then the real Ghostbusters, and then transitioned on <laughs> to, to uh, Ghostbusters 2. So yeah, let me know in chat when you saw any of those Ghostbusters for the first time and how, and what was your reaction? Let me know. Let me know in chat. And if you're new to the chat or you haven't been here for a while, oh, and I haven't said hello to some people. Real But Fake is here. Hi, Real But Fake. Welcome. Uh, thank you for joining uh, the live uh, loving your Ghostbusters emojis. And if you want to shout out in chat or you want to shout yourself out in chat, just do it. Throw, throw, throw it in there and I'll, and I'll shout you out. And um, you can see uh, behind me here on this screen, um, it's some of the Ghostbusters content that I have on my channel playing from YouTube right now. This is my behind the scenes of uh, filming, filming uh, Frozen Empire in New York City. So um, if you want to check that out and you're new here, uh, those videos are all available on this channel. A lot of Ghostbusters content, but not just Ghostbusters content. I um, do lots of other stuff as well. Um, I'm into a lot of different genres, lots of geeky things. <laughs> and I'm also into building props and creating experiences for others based on some of those genres and some of those things. So on my channel, you'll find me building a... I, I've done a video recently of me building a ghost trap. Um, I did a video of me recently... Um, building a dinosaur, which is in the background here. I don't know if we can see it. Can we see it? It's, hang on, I'm gonna move over here. I'm gonna move over here. I don't think you can see it, is it? Let me move this camera. <laughs> Let me move the camera. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold my hand up to stop the, uh, the, the VR stuff and uh, see if I can move the camera over here. Hang on, see if it's gonna go over there. You can just about see the dinosaur there <laughs> in the background behind my light uh, that's trying to, uh... <laughs> trying to capture me there. Um, but yeah, that, there's a whole video on my channel about, about that as well. Uh, Stephanie saying uh, that you like the hoodie. Thank you. Yeah, it's my, uh, it's my back to the future hoodie. Um, Ghostbusters collector, a couple of years we'll be celebrating the 40th anniversary of the real Ghostbusters. Wow, that's true. I didn't think about that. I was only thinking about the anniversary of Ghostbusters. What would you like to see happen to mark the anniversary? Well, I would love to see a cartoon series because if you, if you are unaware of this, there's a lot of news out there that there's a whole cartoon series coming. Um, they're working with Netflix on that. And um, I would love to see a return to form of that Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters cartoon. And I know that like that cartoon is very much of its era. Um, and if you're not familiar with real Ghostbusters, go check it out. You can see a lot of episodes on the Ghostbusters YouTube channel um, on YouTube, funnily enough. Uh, but you can go there and check it out. And it's got that very kind of classic 80s vibe to it. Um, and so I'm sure that whatever they're producing for Netflix is going to be a little bit more up to date. But um, so to answer your question, uh, Ghostbusters collector, I'd love to see something that was a little bit more up to date, but that reflected that kind of vibe. I think that would be good. And again, I don't know how long it's gonna take them to get to the point of releasing the cartoon, because I know Gil Keenan, the uh, director of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, said that he's seen 
the artwork from that, and he's seen various other parts of that in prep. So I don't know how, how far we are from actually seeing the cartoon. I think that it's, it's going to be at least a year away from now if they're only at the concept part. So hopefully that was, hopefully that answers your question. I hope it, I hope it does. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Tsukiyomi said, I saw Ghostbusters 1 younger than I can remember. <laughs> uh, Ghostbusters 2 in the theater. Um, and I would always watch real Ghostbusters on Saturday mornings. Yeah, that sounds very similar to me. Uh, that is definitely um, my experience of, of Ghostbusters. Uh, Skelton, hello, welcome. Um, and uh, sorry, I didn't say hi to you early when you said, how is my day going? My day is going good, thank you. How is your day going? I hope it's going well. My favorite Ghostbusters movie, um, I've tried to answer this question for folks before. My... Uh, it's hard, because what I say, and people are going to get bored of hearing me say this, so I'm sorry, folks, that listen to me regularly. Um, my theory on rating movies is that your opinion of a film changes through time, depending on what's going on in your life, right? So I have a very different reaction now to movies with kids in them. Uh, now I have my own kids, right? Uh, to the way I did when I didn't have any kids, as a kind of stupid example. But... Um, well, maybe not stupid, but as an oversimplistic example. Um, and so um, I always find that my feelings about movies kind of come and go, depending on what's going on in my life. Um, so I think it's really, really hard for me to, to kind of rate them. But I still think my favourite has to be the original. Um, and then I really liked Afterlife, I have to say. Um, I enjoyed it um, for a lot of reasons. Um, partly because my bun, buddy Ben Eady was on... <laughs> <laughs> was the, the guy in charge of props on set. Uh, we've talked about Ben before. In fact, he joined this chat last week uh, at this time uh, and, and chatted with us a little bit. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Cameron is on the chat. Cameron, folks, is writing his own Ghostbusters script and he's talking about what he's doing in that. Uh, an action ghost trapping car chase at midnight, and an Ecto Force were trapping a ghost on motorcycles and new vehicles. That sounds cool. That sounds very cool. Uh, and Skelton's day's going beautifully. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Um, oh, Stephanie's saying, uh, my nephew wants to know if I like Legos. I do like Legos. Um, and being British, I'm going to call them Lego as plural, um, because uh, that's technically how we're supposed to refer to them. The multiple of Lego is Lego. <laughs> but I love them, yes. In fact, just, just out of this room over there, there is a Lego building table, literally. Um, I have to say that the majority of the Lego stuff that's out there is Star Wars. Um, our family has a real proclivity towards Lego Star Wars uh, vehicles uh, of late, so we have a lot of those. And then we do have some Harry Potter Lego um, and at one time, we had um, a uh, Lord of the Rings Lego castle, which was pretty awesome to build. That was a Christmas Day build that um, I spent a long day on Christmas Day with my kids building this huge Lord of the Rings uh, Lego castle, which was super fun. I actually love those memories of uh, on Christmas morning building a Lego set. It's one of my favorite things to do with the kids. My kids are getting a bit older for that now, but um, they still love building Lego no matter what. And, you know, Lego is not just for kids anymore, right? <laughs> um, let's see, Ghostbusters Collector is saying, my favorite Ghostbusters film is easily the first one. Uh, for me, none of the others can even come close. That's cool, yeah, and I, and I get that. And I know, um, you know, we all have very personal feelings about movies and very personal experiences with movies. Um, and so, you know, I always think, you know, I I have films I love that some people hate or or just can't understand why I like that film, but I do. And I think just taste is a very personal thing and I think that's totally fine. And so, yeah, I mean, and I agree. The, the first Ghostbusters is, is always gonna be the best. And Stephanie's saying the same thing uh, about that. Um, uh, Tuskonomi is saying in Afterlife there are two scenes showing dates that relate to the coming of Goza ranging from 1381 to 2134 and also 220 but the last number is hidden 
it could, uh, it would like to see the origin story of Goza. I'm, I'm, that's a great, that's a great observation, yeah, and, and a few people have talked about that number sequence being something that could be picked up in the future for a future Ghostbusters um, movie, and I, I have the feeling that, that certainly in the live action movies we're done with the Goza story, I would not be surprised if we come back to it in some form in the cartoons. I, I mean, it's got to happen, right? So I think that that's good fodder for that. Um, so yeah. Uh, what are my thoughts on the Christine remake? Um, I don't have a lot of thoughts about that right now, other than I was talking to a very good friend of mine uh, just a, a couple of days ago, no, yesterday, about Christine <laughs> and about the original um, and how good the original is and how well that movie stands up today. Um, so I'm always a little wary of remakes um, just because I just sometimes think they're not necessary. I just, you know, sometimes movies were just great and leave them leave them where they are and come up with something new. I don't mind ca carrying on a series. I'm happy that they're carrying on Ghostbusters. Um, but I, I don't want to see them remake the original Ghostbusters. That would suck, right? I think. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Things like Christine, there's some movies that in their day didn't necessarily have the same weight um, that so other movies do historically. So if you compare Christine to Back to the Future, for instance, like trying to remake Back to the Future would be a disaster in my opinion. Um, and actually, you know, the, the creators of Back to the Future have said, let's not do that. Um, I think that um, Bob Gale has said that as long as he's alive, Back to the Future will not be remade. <laughs> Which is why he's doing Back to the Future the Musical at the moment. And if you're not aware of Back to the Future the Musical, oh my gosh, it's awesome. Uh, if you can see it and you're close enough to Broadway to get to see it, or you're in another country, uh, in England, you can see Back to the Future the Musical. And um, I think it's coming to Japan and Australia. And if you're in the US and you don't live uh, near the East Coast, there's a Back to the Future Musical tour coming through. Um, and it's a fantastic show. When I first heard of it, I thought, oh my gosh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, but I started to hear good things about it, and uh, then we went to see it as a family, and we loved it. It was funny, a kind of party from beginning to end, and so much fun. Um, so if you have a chance to see it, go see it. And of course, it has a DeLorean in it. They, they do everything that happens in the movie with the DeLorean, on a stage. How? <laughs> and I have a couple of videos on my channel about Back to the Future the Musical, um, a review of it and a conversation about it. And um, we actually were, were lucky enough to go to the gala night of Back to the Future the Musical, which was incredible, incredible fun. Uh, we uh, met uh, a lot of the original cast of the movie uh, that were there for the, the gala night and um, even managed to bump into Steven Spielberg, which was amazing. So, um, and if you want me to tell more about that story of meeting Steven Spielberg, I'm very happy to. I think I've shared it before, um, but if folks want to hear about it, I'm happy to share it. It was really awesome. Um, so, sorry, back to chat, folks. Lots of people putting things in chat. Um, so, yeah, my thoughts on the Christine remake. I, uh, I'm, I'm open to it. Let's see. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, but I like the original. Uh, uh, Jason, hello. Hello from Calgary again. I'm buying the Home Alone Lego for this Christmas with lights. Nice. Is that the house? The Home Alone house? Let me know. Let me know if that's, uh, that's what it is. Um, and Stephanie, you're welcome. Happy to answer the question. Um, Ghostbuster Collector asking me about Lego. Also, which would you prefer to own? Lego Spook Central or Lego Farmhouse? Oh, you mean Firehouse. I think you mean Firehouse, right? Uh... Oh, that's hard. Because the Firehouse is so classic, right? It's such a classic Ghostbusters thing. But building the temple at the top, the Spook Central, would be cool. Oh, that's a really hard one. I think probably if I had to choose one, I would choose the Firehouse. But I would like both. 
If you're offering to send them to me, feel free. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Christy, Ghostbusters movie. She's saying, Christy, hi, Christy, welcome. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm just reading your questions here. Ghostbusters Collector again saying, I wrote a story years ago in which Ghostbusters caught the Grim Reaper. <laughs> nice. When they realize that they've, what they've done, Egon knows that they have to release him because death is part of the natural order. I like that. That's very cool. Uh, oh, you did mean a Lego farmhouse. Okay. Oh, do you mean the afterlife farmhouse? Just confirm for me, because that would be cool too. Or the barn, the dirt farmer's barn would be a very cool thing with a, with a Lego Ecto. Who wouldn't want that? That would be cool as well. And a field of ghost traps because... If you have a Lego farm, you need a field of ghost traps to go with it. <laughs> so yeah, cool. I'm loving these questions. Keep them coming, coming, folks. Uh, this is this is great. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, and um, speaking, I mean, back to the kind of topic of remakes. I think I think remakes are a challenging thing to do, right? Um, I think anything that that exists that people have a love for, if you remake that thing into something that is different, it can be hard for people to get their head around it. And we've seen that happen with a couple of sci-fi uh, uh, shows. Um, Battlestar Galactica is a great example of this. Um, and um, Star Trek is a great example of this. So rewriting Star Trek with a different timeline with the same characters as the original as an example of that and there was a split kind of sense of how people felt about that um so yeah and, and Battlestar Galactica was the same the new one uh, and I say new it's not new now but the um the remake you know um having a female Starbuck was a huge thing for people people were like really put off by that I loved it I loved the the, the new Battlestar Galactica and I also loved the original so I didn't have an issue with that one. I think anything where you remake it, you have to just be really, really careful that you understand why. Why am I remaking this? Why, why do I want to remake it? What is the value in retelling the story in a different way? And if there's real value there and it's not just about making money for a studio, then I'm up for it. I'm up for seeing a different interpretation of a story. I'm not a fan of like, let's just remake this basically the same. I think it has to have a different feel to it or a different take to be worth it. Um, so Ghostbusters Collector did mean the Afterlife Farmhouse or Spook Central. Thank you. Yeah, I would, if it was those two, I'd have Spook Central would be my <laughs> my choice from those two. Uh, and uh, Tuskiyomi says, uh, I really want the Icons Lego Farmhouse to fit the Icons Lego Ecto-1. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, the firehouse would be amazing. I would love that. Yeah. Skeleton saying, what's my favorite car brand? Oh my gosh. So I'm going to say something really dumb that's not going to sound very cool, but I don't care. Um, I really like the Mini Cooper. <laughs> um, and I think it's because of my love of the original um, 60s movie, The Italian Job, where they had all those minis chasing around. And so I've always loved the mini. And I thought the Mini Cooper, the update to that car was great. And many, many years ago, when I was a filmmaker myself, I shot a movie um, and we product placed uh, a Mini Cooper in that movie when I shot it. And I got to drive that car around a lot. Um, BMW kindly lent it to us for the film. And so, uh, yeah, I like <laughs> it. may not be the coolest car, but I really like it. I, I do like a Mini Cooper. Um, Okay, Cameron's telling us more about his his movie. movie. Uh, lots of stuff going on there, Cameron. You've got a lot of good ideas. Um, uh, Ghostbusters Collect saying, what I'd like is a collection of different styles of Ghostbusters animated cartoons, similar to Animatrix. Ooh, that's interesting. And I suppose that's kind of similar. Yeah, so you're talking about... Um, I mean, I suppose it's similar with what they did with the manga or anime take on Star Wars. I don't know if you've seen those um, movies that they did, um, movies, shorts, 
uh, where they did Star Wars Story, but in an anime style. And each one was a very different anime style. I really enjoyed that. That was fun. So yeah, I think opening up um, stuff that's not necessarily canon, but is up for interpretation and for fun. I'm definitely up for that. That's a great idea, uh, Ghostbusters Collector. I think I think that's cool. Yeah. So, um, any other questions you got for me? Um, put them put them in uh, put them in chat because I'm, you know, I'm only as good as your questions, guys. That's the reality here. You know, if I don't get any questions or anything's in chat, I'm just gonna, you know, I'm just a random British guy sitting in a geeky basement. That, that's how this goes. <laughs> Uh, Lightning. Hello, Lightning. Ghostbusters horror comedy. Now, are you asking me if it is a horror comedy or are you just stating that it is? Let me know. Um, because for me, I think the unique thing about Ghostbusters is I think that it is a horror comedy. It is also an action movie in many respects. Um, and it's also a buddy movie, right? about a bunch of guys setting up a business together. So there's something very unique about that, it's that blended genre that makes Ghostbusters very special. And I think that's why it has endured for so long and just why it's such a great, um, you know, what, what kind of grabbed me by the throat as a kid and made me go, watch this film, it's amazing. So yeah. Um, Oh, Skellen's asking me what my favourite tank is. Um, now, I I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> um, but my son Max would have an answer for you uh, because he plays uh, War Thunder. And so um, he talks about different types of tank all the time. And so I'm sorry that I can't give you a better answer to that, uh, Skellen. I do apologise. Um, uh, he he uh, plays as different tanks in that game and he also draws tanks. Uh, he has a whole notebook full of tank drawings. Um, so um, he would be the person to, to to ask. And right now, if I try and remember any of the names of the ones that look cool, he drew one which was huge and has this huge plating on it. I can't remember the name of it. Um, but yeah, I that was that was a very, very cool one. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks, Skelton. I appreciate you saving me from myself <laughs> when it comes to this. And, and uh, welcome, if you're new here and you've just arrived and you wonder what is going on, uh, we are in the fandom foyer where geeks gather chatting about all things geeky uh, in my geeky basement. We've been talking about Ghostbusters, we've been talking about remakes, we've been talking about Back to the Future. Um, we, we can talk about anything you want to talk about. Uh, so, you know, uh, jump into chat, make yourself known, say hi. Um, you're very, very welcome here. And... Uh, Let's let's talk about whatever you want to talk about. Um, Ghostbusters Collector is saying, Egon, Ray, Peter, and Winston are iconic characters. Can the franchise carry on successfully without them? Uh, are the new characters they've set up strong enough? Whoa. That's a good... It's a great question. And I... I, I, I know that you've shared your opinions on these characters yourself. I've seen in chat... Uh, I know that you, you, you're not sure that they were necessarily all needed or strong enough. Um, maybe I've got that wrong, by the way. If I have, uh, correct me, please, uh, in chat. I, um, I think so. I, I think that they need to lean into the new characters because I think while you're still strong by the old characters, it's hard to move forward. I liked the pairing of new characters with the old. Um, I liked the Ray, the podcast, and uh, Phoebe adventure. Um, little side story. Um, I liked Venkman helping out the guys in the tech lab. I thought that was great. So I liked those, I think when they were, when the characters were split out in those combinations, I think they made sense and they were really good. But I think when, um, when, when you're finding that um, you still need those old characters to keep going, I think that's a challenge. So I think they can be strong enough if the writing's strong enough. And they need to make sure the writing's strong enough so you care enough about those characters for them to kind of carry forward. So that's my rough, rough answer for you. 
Joe, welcome from Indonesia. Hello, welcome to the chat. Uh, what time is it where you are right now? Is it the, is it the morning? Tell us in chat. I can never remember quite what's where where everything is where everything is globally from a time zone point of view. This is coming from a guy that came from Britain that now lives in America that's always confused about, you know, in, in England, we never had to worry about time zones. The whole country was one time zone. So, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. So let me know what, what time of day is it in Indonesia right now? But welcome, but welcome. And again, if anyone else is new and they've just arrived in chat and they want to say hello, say hello, make yourself known. Um, we're, we're answering all questions. We're talking about um, all things geek related is what we're talking about now. And, and if you're here and you've been hanging around and you like what you see, drop a sub, subscribe to the channel. Um, we have more than me sitting in front of geekery. We have exploring Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. We have making props. We have all sorts of geek based stuff uh, as part of uh, this channel. And so if you like what you see, um, or if you're into that stuff, then click, click the like button and, um, and subscribe. Because, hey, that's what this community is about. <laughs> Belonging and, and being together. Cameron, I think your whole script for your movie is going to be uh, in, uh, <laughs> in the chat here over the last few weeks. Uh, you've got the spirit king of Halloween. Wow, in your in your movie. That's crazy. Very, very cool. Skelton is from Canada. Awesome. I love Canada. Canada's a great country. And the great Ben Eadie, who I've mentioned before, uh, is from Canada. And of course, uh, Ghostbusters um, Afterlife was shot in Canada. Uh, so um, yeah, G Ghostbusters has a legacy uh, with you where you're from. Um, so question for you guys, um, let's talk about, let's talk about Back to the Future for a bit, um, because, um, uh, as you know, I ran a poll, if you're new here, you won't know this, but, um, for my subscribers, I ran a poll and asked my subscribers, um, out of a bunch of different genres of movies or fandoms of movies, which one did they like? And I, uh, had a poll, it was between, uh, Back to the Future, um, Star Wars was in there, Aliens, the Aliens franchise is in there because I really like that franchise. Um, and what was the last one? Oh, yeah, Jurassic Park. <laughs> uh, and we had a poll on our channel and we asked people um, which of those things they preferred. And that's really hard because I, I kind of made it hard on purpose because I like all of those fandoms. Um, but I asked people to vote on which thing they were most interested in, partly because I'm just interested to know what uh, the community's in, into. Um, and also because I think, keep thinking about, you know, what's the new content that I want to create for my channel. And the clear winner, the clear winner of that poll was Back to the Future, which doesn't surprise me because a lot of the folks on, on, uh, on my channel that are subscribers are into Ghostbusters. And so we, um, and so there is going to be some Back to the Future stuff coming on the channel. There's already two videos on Back to the Future on the channel. Both of them are about the, uh, the Back to the Future musical, which is great. Um, as I said earlier, really, really fun. Um, and um, as you know, if you're, if you're not new here, you know that on this channel we create live experiences. So um, we did an experience two years ago, which was Jurassic Park related, where you got to actually be chased by dinosaurs for real. And then um, uh, last year we did Ghostbusters, um, where people got to basically fix a proton pack and then uh, go trap a ghost, which happened, just happened to be Slimer. Um, and so this year, the plan, all being well, is to do a Back to the Future based live experience. And the hope is that we will actually have a DeLorean time machine as part of that experience. And so, you know, if that happens, then part of what we're gonna be doing on this channel is exploring that time machine, looking at it in more detail, talking about how it looks, how that DeLorean was uh, made into a time machine. It's gonna be, gonna be super fun. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, tell me, which Back to the Future did you like the most and why? Uh, if you're into Back to the Future and if you've never watched Back to the Future, let us know that too. And then, you know, 
because we'll, we'll tell you that we want you to go watch it. <laughs> and if you and if you like Back to the Future, but you don't want to type something in 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 chat, just spam the heart the heart emoji and and let me know that that's something that you that you enjoy. Um. So um. Let's see. Uh, Cameron's saying, "Have you ever wondered how a proton pack from the movie feels on your back?" Um, I I have. I mean, one of the cool things that I've been able to do is I've tried on a few different types of pack. Ghostbusters pack. I've tried on the Haslab pack. Uh, Nick, my buddy, has multiple packs, um, and I have the Spirit pack, and then I have a pack that I'm building myself. Um, but Ben Edie will tell you. Um, who's a prop master in Ghostbusters Afterlife, the packs that they use on set are heavy, but also they have a real, and I say real, I think you'll understand what I mean, but a, essentially a, a real cyclotron. So they have a spinning light in the new packs for Afterlife that really spins around. And you can see that um, in, the, in the movie that that light is spinning. It's not just a flashing light like it is in the original Ghostbusters movie. So that was an improvement they made for Afterlife. Um, but the actual packs and the neutrona ones uh, now on set they actually um really you know shake and vibrate and have some substance to them so when the actors are firing them or when they're using them on set there's a tactility to that experience that makes them feel like they can interact uh with the prop in a in a real way um and actually if you've got um any of, if you've got the Afterlife pack um, or the Spengler wand, uh, both made by Haslab, uh, both of those have a similar shaking, vibration kind of uh, feeling to them uh, that makes them feel feel real. So yeah. Um, and Ghostbusters Collector, I think this is in reference to my comment about you know or your question about uh, the new actors kind of carrying on. Just saying, think Gary and Phoebe are interesting enough, but carry Trevor and Lucky in podcast. A dull as ditch water. That's a very British phrase that I'm very familiar with. Um, plus, I think Ghostbusters works much better with adult characters. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that, and again, you know, I, I don't necessarily fully agree with that, but I understand where you're coming from. I think one of the things that made After Life work for me was it was really coming off the success of Stranger Things, and I think that you know, it was not an accident that uh, that Finn Wolfhard was cast in uh, in this movie, in Afterlife, uh, because of his success in Stranger Things. And so I think that that was kind of the vibe that they were going for in that movie. I think that, you know, but kids grow up. So I think, um, you know, for the next movie, well, pretty much all those kids are going to be adults <laughs> by then. So I think that will be, be interesting. Um, so... Back to the future, uh, some answers coming into chat about about that. Um, Back to the Future 1 and 3 were my favourite. Uh, that's from uh, Tsukinomi. Uh, yes, um, that's cool. I like both of those movies. It's hard for me to, to pick one of them, uh, but I do. I, I, that's a good choice. Um, Skeleton says that they have all three on DVD of Back to the Future. Uh, Big Show is saying hello. Hello, Big Show. Welcome to the chat. And Cool Godzilla 2024 is just saying Ghostbusters. Yes, Ghostbusters. I agree. <laughs> Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. Um, and Cameron is talking about Jurassic World. So Jurassic World Chaos Theory is actually a line that Jeff Goldblum said when he was talking to himself in the first uh, movie, yeah. I mean, uh, if you want to talk about Jurassic Park or Jurassic World, I'm very, very happy to talk about that. Um, love, uh, love those movies, the originals, and I, I quite like the new ones as well. Uh, Big Show is asking a question: Would you have preferred the original cast doing a standalone Ghostbusters three, almost before Harold passed, or did you like the new Ghostbusters movie enough to not have done this? I think, I think we would all have loved to have seen. A Ghostbusters 3 with the original cast. I think Ghostbusters 2 unfortunately wasn't as successful as they would have liked and then unfortunately uh, as I'm sure you may well know uh, Bill Murray and Harold Ramis fell out which meant that it was really difficult for them to 
do anything. And the kind of closest we got to Ghostbusters 3 um, with the original cast was the Ghostbusters computer game. And I think that in many respects, that movie, that game is that movie we didn't get. Um, so yeah, but yes, I would love, I would love to, uh, love to have seen that. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, I, but, oh, and, and on your question, did I like the new Ghostbusters enough? I did like them. So, you know, I, I always feel like we missed out on that, but I like, I like, personally like the way that they took, uh, they took things forward, um, in, in the new movies. Um, I, I, I enjoyed them. Cool. And I think, uh, yeah. So, um, what other questions do you have? What else do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk more about Ghostbusters? It sounds like it. <laughs> or do you want to talk about Back to the Future? Do you want to talk about Jurassic Park? Do you want to talk about anything else um, that we haven't covered in, in chat so far? Um, I'm happy. I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to talk about it. Um, and again, if, you, if you're just arriving, if you've just appeared on this channel, if you've seen this random British guy, he's appeared in your feed and you're like, what is going on here? Um, this is the, the fandom foyer. We are talking about fandoms. We're talking about uh, geekery uh, here in my geeky basement. Um, and um, this channel is, is, is here for it. It's here for your fandoms. It's here for your geekery. Um, it's here for us to have an open and fun chat about those things. And we're talking a lot about Ghostbusters because we've been talking about Ghostbusters for the last month or so. A lot of Ghostbusters content on this channel. Um, but a whole range of stuff, not just Ghostbusters prop building and um, other geeky genres are also represented by this channel. If you like that kind of thing, then hit like, hit subscribe, um, and you'll find all that other video content, um, even behind the scenes of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is available on this channel. Um, Skeleton is asking, do I think they should make a fourth Back to the Future movie? Um, I don't, th I don't think so. I don't think they should just because, I mean, would I like a fourth Back to the Future mo movie with Michael J. Fox when he was younger and Doc Brown when he was younger? Yes, <laughs> if there was a good story to tell. Um, would I want more Back to the Future? Of course. Um, but I also think there's something about something staying the way it is. Those three movies are kind of perfect as they are for me. Um, and we talked about this last week, right, on this chat. We talked about um, uh, what are perfect movies? What perfect movies are there out there? And I proposed that Back to the Future was pretty much a perfect movie. Um, and, and so I, I don't think I'd want to see a fourth one just because I think it would break that kind of great pattern that they built up uh, for, for those. Um, big Show, I have not seen Godzilla Minus One yet. I have not. Uh, Cameron is talking about Jurassic World Chaos Theory. Do you want the cast from... Camp Cretaceous to return. That's an interesting one. So, um, Camp Cretaceous, I didn't watch avidly, but I did go to the live Jurassic Park uh, show. And I don't know if you've seen that, or Jurassic World show, I should say. It was a big stadium show, and they actually had that show cross over with the first Jurassic World movie and Camp Cretaceous, those two storylines kind of merged in the, in the stadium show. If you haven't seen the stadium show and you're super into Jurassic Park or you're into seeing huge dinosaurs brought to life with animatronics on a stadium stage in front of you, that show is definitely for you. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I think that there's some, uh, I, I don't think it would be bad to see those guys come back. Dave Wright is in the chat. Hello, Dave. Dave is my good friend from the UK. Welcome, Dave, to the chat. Dave is asking me, how, oh, this is a good one. How am I feeling about Star Wars Acolyte in a few weeks? Excited or enough Star Wars already? What a good question. Um, if you're a Star Wars fan or have been a Star Wars fan, uh, hit the like uh, icon. Let us know. Show, show some love uh, if you're into Star Wars. So I get a sense of kind of who's on uh, that likes Star Wars. 
Ah, uh, I have to admit to feeling a little bit tired <laughs> of Star Wars, and I can't even, I can't even um, believe I'm saying that. Uh, because I've been a massive Star Wars fan for a very, very long time. And uh, I know, Dave, you're a big Star Wars fan as well. Um, but there have been some, in my opinion at least, some patchy Star Wars TV shows. I think some of them have been very, very good. And I think some of them have been not so good. And so I'm always a little scared um, about a new Star Wars TV show now. <laughs> I'm like, is it gonna be good? So my answer is, how am I feeling about it? I'm feeling skeptical, but hopeful. So I would like to be proven wrong about my skepticism. Um, and my skepticism isn't founded in anything that I know about the show, other than my experience of previous shows. So I want it to be worth watching, Am I going to watch it? Yes, of course I'm going to watch it. Anything Star Wars, <laughs> I'm going to watch. <laughs> Which reminds me, I need to catch up on Bad Batch. Um, if I haven't caught up on that. Uh, that's a great question, Dave. Thank you for that and for putting me in, in a difficult position there to know how to answer that. Um, uh, Konomi says, I'm looking forward to Chaos Theory. That's cool. Um, Big Show is saying, just explaining on what Skelton just asked, obviously Michael J. Fox wouldn't really be able to act in it, sadly, but what if they explained the story like Ghostbusters Afterlife? Ah, that's really interesting. I think if they did a reboot that was in the Back to the Future universe that completely preserved and didn't, you know, change other than for time travel purposes, uh, I would be interested in that. I think it would have to be dealt with very, very carefully because I think some of us, and um, Ghostbuster Collector, I know that you've shared this before, that you, you know, have started to feel like maybe they shouldn't have touched Ghostbusters anymore and should have left it alone. And that's kind of, I suppose, what I'm articulating about Star Wars there a little bit. Uh, I'm here for it. I'm, I'm really here for more Back to the Future, but I, I'm just very wary um, about, about that. But would I be, if it was like really well done and it was just going to be perfect, which is almost impossible, would I want to see it? Yes. <laughs> yes, I would. Um, thank you for the clarification there, Big Show. I appreciate it. Um, Ghostbuster Collector wasn't a big fan of the second and third Back to the Future films. I get the impression, Ghostbuster Collector, that you're an originals only fan. It's my is my feeling. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, Big Show is saying, or maybe use CGI to put Marty in it. You see, that's always a difficult one, isn't it, with CGI, uh, because it's been done... I think the very best ever use of CGI to bring somebody back that was either pa had passed on or was now older was actually Ghostbusters Afterlife. I thought the ghost of Egon was pretty much perfect and perhaps the first time that the computer graphic version of that character did not distract me from the film um, and of course so important to that movie that sequence right because it was an emotional moment and it had to work so there's a lot resting on that final scene kind of like when they used computer graphics for the first time in Jurassic Park and Steven Spielberg was like, I'm handing over my finale to computer animators. I have no idea if this is going to work. And of course, we all know it worked absolutely fantastically. Um, it did. Uh, right, let's see. Um, uh, Ghostbusters Click saying, I don't think there's any more story to explore when it comes to Back to the Future. Yeah, yeah, I, I think, uh, I think, I, I kind of agree. I kind of agree. Um, and sorry, um, Big Show is asking about my opinion on Beetlejuice 2. Salacious cash grab or potential to be great? Um, uh, I, I hope it's good, right? I really hope it's good. I mean, it's really hard for studios to resist going back into these franchises. And there's a bit, I don't know if you know about this, but... Um, Part of the way the studio system works, 
Um, and, and if anyone knows better than I do, please feel free to jump in chat and tell me I'm talking rubbish. But my understanding is that most producers have a tenure with a studio that lasts around five years. Um, and, or at least their contract lasts for five years. And so um, part of the challenge for a producer is they've got to make money for the studio. That's part of their job, right? The main part of their job. And so if um, they risk money on an unknown property, and what I mean by that is a script that nobody's seen or a topic that nobody's seen, um, it's a bigger risk than for an existing property that they know people are going to be excited about. Um, so doing another Ghostbusters movie, doing another Star Wars movie, doing another movie in a space where there's already evidence that people like it is a safer bet if you've got a five-year contract. Um, and you've just got to kind of prove yourself quickly. And so it takes a long time sometimes to develop a brand new property or a brand new IP for a studio. And that's a big, it's a huge risk for them. So I think that's sometimes why we see people depending much, much more on reboots and bringing things back uh, in a way that, you know, they, they do all the time at the moment. Um, but, you know, we've seen Dune has had an amazing amount of success. I mean, the, the first one was, they didn't know if they were going to do a second one. It was really in that space. Um, but they went ahead and did it and, and, it, and it's been very, very successful for them. So what do I think about Beetlejuice? Um, I hope it's going to be good. Uh, I hope it has a meaningful addition. Am I excited to see Beetlejuice on the screen again? Yes, I am. Hopefully it pays off and it's worth, it's worth watching. Um, Ghostbusters Collector, I don't think... Oh, you already... Sorry, I already read that. Apologies. Um, I doubt the future will ever be... Back to the Future will ever be touched. The creator has expressed that he's not any intent of doing anything else with it and they would need his approval to do anything with it. Yes, yeah. Um, Bob Gale um, definitely uh, said that very thing. Um, Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis are kind of co-creators. Bob Gale, the, the main writer, and obviously Robert Zemeckis, the director. Um, yeah, they don't want it touched, which is why I was saying earlier on this, um, on this live that... Um, They've moved into doing Back to the Future the Musical, and Bob Gale is very involved uh, with Back to the Future the Musical. In fact, if you want to meet Bob Gale, go see Back to the Future the Musical, because he's usually there. I have to say, he's there very, very frequently. So the first time we went to see Back to the Future the Musical, and we went to the stage door at the end, and we met the cast, we met Bob Gale. He was there uh, with the cast at the show. Um, and when we went back for the gala night, Robert Zemeckis was there. <laughs> In fact, I have a, a signed um, program, uh, not program, we don't call it program in America, uh, uh, playbill. Playbill, program is what we call it in England, which is the, you know, the, the, the list of everybody that's in it. Um, but yeah, um, we have a signed playbill uh, with Robert Zemeckis' signature on it, amongst others that were there that night. So yeah, very, very cool. Um, let's see. Um, uh, Ghostbusters Collect saying, I thought the, cre the creators of Afterlife did an amazing job recreating Harold Ramis, though I had many problems with the film. I thought that final scene worked both visually and emotionally. Yeah, totally agree with you. Um, it was, uh, yeah, uh, as, as pitch perfect as you can get for that moment. Um, and yeah, and that, that's why, I mean, Afterlife and Frozen Empire are very different movies. Afterlife is a much more emotionally rooted movie about somebody finding out who they are. You know, Phoebe is finding out in that story that she is actually related to Egon and he wants her to kind of carry on what he's done or at least needs her help to complete his mission. And so it's quite an emotionally rooted movie, whereas, after, uh, whereas um, Frozen Empire is very different, uh, a very, very different kind of vibe, much more like a kind of cartoon in, in my opinion. Um, what's my most anticipated film franchise reboot or sequel coming, says Big Show. Ooh. What am I most excited about? Um, I was most excited about Ghostbusters. Um, and that's come and gone. 
I'm really excited about Furiosa, uh, part of the Mad Max story. I love Mad Max Fury Road. I think that movie is awesome. Um, and uh, so I'm hoping that Furiosa will live up to uh, the same kind of hype uh, as, as that one um, and, and be good. Um, uh, oh, and uh, what else? Um, there's a new Aliens movie. Now, the, they've not had a lot of success in that space, although I liked Ridley Scott's two movies that he did uh, that were kind of... He said weren't Aliens prequels, but obviously ended up being Aliens prequels. Um, but this new one looks like it's set in that time period of the original Alien. I'm excited for that. I think I think that's going to be good. So that, those are the things I'm most excited for at the moment. Oh, Ghostbusters Collector Gladiator 2. Yeah, I'm interested to see what that's going to be like or what that's even about. Maybe you know more than I do. Um... Pixel Cuba, happy that Elfman is working on the score again for Beetlejuice. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second, Pixel Cuba. And um, welcome, welcome back, Trip. Thank you for joining the 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 uh, the, the chat. Um, yeah, Danny Elfman, um, his score of Batman was a groundbreaking score. It was so so different. Uh, in many respects, to any film score that had been done up until that time. Um, so him doing the score... I mean, we know Danny Elfman does pretty much everything with um, Tim Burton. Um, but um, if you've never heard the Tim Burton Batman score or listened to it, I highly recommend you do. It's a really terrific soundtrack. Um, one of my favourites. Um, I listened to it a lot when I was much younger and wore out my cassette. <laughs> Shows you how old I am, uh, listening to that. But yeah, um, Cameron, I cried at the end of Afterlife. Uh, yes, I did too, Cameron. I did too. Big Show saying same. Yeah, it's a really emotional film, and they do a great job of that. Um, wasn't Ghostbusters? So this is Phoenix Miles. Hi, Phoenix Miles. Um, welcome to the chat. Um, saying. Um, wasn't Ghostbusters Frozen Empire uh, composed of many things from the past? Um, I, and if I'm interpreting your que question correctly, I think that it's what they talked about is it's very much based on the kind of feeling uh, of the cartoon uh, of uh, the real Ghostbusters is very much what kind of was, was going on for that. Um, so I don't think they were taking specific things, um, but they were taking that kind of feel... And obviously, Frozen Empire is based on, um, you know, bringing the franchise forwards. If I haven't answered your question, then uh, please clarify for me. Um, oh, Ghostbusters Collector Thundercats. Interesting. You might know more about that than me. Are they making a live action of Thundercats? That would be interesting. Um, years ago, they rebooted it with a slightly different manga-esque style. And I liked that. I think the writing was really good. I think the writing was actually better than the 80s writing. It had more of an arc to it. Um, I really liked that. But I don't think they'd sold enough toys, which is why they didn't carry on with the cartoon, unfortunately. But I thought the cartoon was great. Um, uh, it's going to be saying the new Alien does look interesting. I agree. I really hope... I want it to have the feels of Alien and Aliens. If it's anywhere between those two places, I'll be super excited. I'm a big fan of the Aliens franchise. I love it. Um, how can you not love the Xenomorph as a baddie alien? I mean, just the most, the coolest alien ever created, I think. Um, Jaden Lamb. Hello, Jaden. Um, me and my father got to see the new Ghostbusters. I thought um, I'd watched it alone, but I had to remind myself they might not be around with me sometime. So you want to spend time with me and we did oh that's really nice Jaden. that's cool that you got to go together yeah it's fun my dad isn't around anymore so i can that resonates with me yeah take the opportunity to hang out with those people that are closest to you uh, as often as you can and make those memories and one of my favorite things to do with my family is to have shared movie experiences together so um yeah absolutely uh that's that's the way to go Nerd Affiliated is in the house. Hello, Nerd Affiliated. Uh, good to see you, sir. Thank you for joining. 
Um, Cameron is saying, what do you feel about the ghosts trapping chase scene at the opening scene when the title goes out to the into the dark? I'm not sure I understand your question, Cameron. Um, maybe you need to clarify for me. Apologies. Uh, Ghostbusters Collect saying the trailer for Frozen Empire contains stuff that wasn't in the film. <laughs> do you think it's right when studios do that? This is a great topic of conversation. Um, one that um, we touched. I touched on. So I did a um, a podcast with Jim Meritato. He does a podcast called Extra Plasm. Uh, Ghostbusters podcast is really great. If you're interested in Ghostbusters and want to hear people chatting about it, that's a great podcast. Also, um, uh, yes, Have Some is a great podcast. Um, and and uh, check out Nerdbusters as well. Uh, Nerd Affiliated. It's part of the Nerd Affiliated Network. Nerdbusters um, uh, on on uh, YouTube and Instagram. Uh, Nerd Affiliates asked me, this is going to be a regular Friday night stream. Well, you know what? I wasn't planning on streaming tonight. And then I thought, you know what? I've got a little bit of time. Maybe I should make this a regular thing. <laughs> uh, my my week has been chaos. And uh, Nerd, I, I owe you a reply on calendaring because I think we were going to do it. Well, I don't think. We talked about doing a live together and I still want to do that. Just my week hasn't worked out. Uh, anyway, the way I liked. So let's talk about that again later. <laughs> I will actually get you a date where we can do that. Um... So sorry, back to these questions. Apologies, folks. Uh, the, the, the Frozen Empire trailer stuff that wasn't in the film. Oh. I think that it... I think it's problematic. I think it's problematic. I don't think that it's... I understand how it happens, right? So um, when I spoke with Jim about this on Extraplasm, what I said was... Um, and some of you already know this. I, I used to be a filmmaker. I, I directed a couple of movies in the past, just independent movies. Um, but I had a film production company for a while. And one of the things that happens in the process of getting from the point where you're making the film to finishing the film is that the promotional thing has to kick in often before the movie's cut or before the, the final cut of the movie's made. So you hand over stuff to the promotion guys and they, and you know, the director doesn't cut the trailer, the director doesn't create the posters, the director doesn't do that stuff. I mean, I did when I was running my company because it was just me. But when when we're talking about Hollywood, um, there's a huge, you know, machine going on from a marketing point of view, and the marketing guys are looking for stuff that's going to grab people's attention um, and get them interested and. I'm going to make the assumption that a lot of the stuff they were given ahead of the movie was stuff that was there in the original cut before they went to Atlanta. Some of you will well know this, that they did reshoots in Atlanta. And um, I'm pretty sure that they tweaked the ending of the movie. The runtime of the movie changed. And I wonder if part of the reason they did reshoots in Atlanta was because they were trying to bring down the time. Um, so anyway... So I understand why stuff gets into uh, things that isn't in the movie in the end. But it did feel like with Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, there was a lot of it. Now, to answer the question, do I think studios should do that? I think it's hard to not do it sometimes. But I think with Frozen Empire, it was a smorgasbord. There was a smorgasbord of stuff. I mean, I think we know most of the deleted scenes because they were in the trailers. <laughs> So, in fact, when I was putting a video together about all the deleted scenes, I mean, Popular Tripe um, on YouTube has done a great uh, video uh, that points out all the stuff that was not in the movie that was in the trailer. Should they do it? I I think it's hard to, to know. I think that it might have created some of the challenges that this movie had because I think people were expecting things that didn't happen. So I think it is challenging. Um, uh Okay, uh, Big Show saying, how badly have DC dropped the ball with Superman and Batman franchises? They arguably have the best IPs of any superhero comics and dropped Henry Cavill after putting him in the end of Black Adam. Yeah, oh my gosh. I mean, we could talk about this one forever. Um, I think they just, as you know, right, we're trying to take that in a whole new direction. So I think James Gunn coming in, um, got a lot of faith in him as I, I, I love the Guardians of the Galaxy films. I've got a lot of faith in him as being able to create a universe and a world. I think let's see. Let's see. Um, yeah. 
they've just it was getting so messy. I think I think that they probably didn't have they just have not had the cohesiveness that Marvel has had. Um, but yeah, Henry Cavill was an amazing Superman. Let's face it, really sad that he's not carrying on. And who knows? I mean, yeah, I mean, I, they're rebooting the whole franchise with the Superman movie. I hope that when they do that Superman movie, they go back to some of the chemistry that was in the original uh, 80s Superman movies. I think that would be fantastic to see some of that. Um, let's see, I'm sorry, I'm getting to your questions late. There's a lot of great questions in chat here. Um, I answered Nerd's question about regular Friday night, and thank you for, for being patient with me. <laughs> I appreciate it. Uh, Jaden saying, uh, one of the ghosts that freaks me out was the possessor. Now it makes me want to impound my vehicle in case <laughs> it doesn't happen. Yeah, the possessor's a really cool ghost. And I love the fact that it the possessor's both scary and funny, right? Because it's really scary when this thing takes over the Ecto. That's terrifying. And then it's really funny when it's a pizza or a or a trash bag. So I thought that was a great... A, a great ghost, yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Francisco Silva saying, sorry, typo, but I didn't see your previous question. Apologies. Um, I'll, c I'll come to your next one in a second. Uh, Ghostbusters Collectors asking, what was my company? You mean my film production company? It was called This Can Motion Pictures was the name of my company and we did two feature films in a documentary while I was running it so we did a movie called Powerless uh, which was like a kind of post-apocalyptic very I mean these are super low budget kind of festival movies so don't get excited that I was some kind of Hollywood director I wasn't I did spend some time in Hollywood while I was a filmmaker uh, doing film festivals and other stuff and getting work done there uh, but yeah, my first movie was Powerless, super low budget, but did very well on the festival circuit. And then I did a movie called Finding Their Feet, which of all things was a coming of age teenager movie that was loosely dance based. Yeah, I know. I know. So that was <laughs> that was it. You can find them both on IMDb. If you look up uh, Matthew Daniels, which is me, you'll find my IMDb profile. <laughs> you'll find my movies <laughs> there. Um, uh, okay. Bandit, hello, hello Bandit, welcome to the chat. Uh, Tuskanomi, I think movie trailers have become like food porn. Uh, neither are real representations of what you're going to eat. Yeah, um, well the way I describe it is kind of like, um, yeah, it's kind of like, you know when you go to McDonald's and you look up on the board and you see the burger, right? What you get never looks like that. <laughs> And we kind of know that. We know that's what's going to happen. You know, we don't take the Big Mac out and go, well, that doesn't look like the picture. We just kind of come to accept it. And I think that's what's starting to happen with movie trailers. Yeah. Um, uh, and and Frank, Francisco is saying, when the trailer spoils the whole movie, that's a bad sign that the movie will be... Uh, <laughs> no bueno, yeah. I, I think you're right, too. I... I don't... Yeah, I... That's always a bad sign to me, I agree. I think that if they're really, really pushing on the trailer um, and um, telling you the whole story, I much prefer a treat, uh, I'd much prefer just a teaser uh, and, and not knowing anything about the movie as a result. That would be my preference. Um, Francisco saying does, uh, oh, sorry, Jaden, I missed you. Uh, I was on Google Images, and I think I've heard that they're remastering the old Ghostbusters video game for PC, for consoles. Uh, well, you got me excited because I'm an Xbox One, and it's compatible with it. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, that would be great if that's what they're going to do. That would be very, very cool. Um, and it's a fun game. Uh, Francisco is saying, does the Possessor uh, is a homage to Coast Encounters when it takes control of the vacuum cleaner? <laughs> Ah, <laughs> that's a good point. I hadn't thought of that. Uh, when the aliens harass the woman. Uh, yeah. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. But uh, they use that kind of vacuum cleaner, don't they? It's it's not a new vacuum that they've put in the room. It's one of those kind of 1980s, 1970s looking vacuum cleaners. So maybe. I think that's a great... A, a, maybe that is a little, uh, a little homage there. You're right. Um, 
Nerd is saying, I was nervous in a good way. We get more of that giant ghost in the lab. I swore it would be a problem for the team. Yeah, that ghost was scary. Why didn't it attack them? That was the, the ghost that made me most nervous. And it was a great moment when all the shields went down in that room and we were worried that something was going to happen. I was like, dude, you know, scary. It was, it was good, but it didn't quite deliver, unfortunately, uh, in the way I was hoping it, it would. Kermit the Human is saying, hello, mate. Um, are you a big fan of the Jurassic World, Jurassic Park series? I am. I am a big fan, um, massive fan of the Jurassic Park series, particularly the first one. Um, and as I said earlier on the stream, probably well before you joined, um, that I built a, a animatronic dinosaur myself, uh, something I've always wanted to do. There's a whole set of videos on my channel of me building an animatronic dinosaur. And there's even a video of a live dinosaur experience that I created. Please go see it. Uh, go check it out. I'm sure you'll like it if you like Jurassic Park or Jurassic World. Uh, Beg the Stuff says, when you got to see the Ecto-Z and you got to hold the PKE meter, did you get to see the PKE meter work? I wish I had, um, but that it wasn't, it wasn't operational. But I did have um, a conversation with Ben Eady about it because Ben... Um, was the prop master on uh, Ghostbusters um, Afterlife. And I showed him the pictures of me holding it, and I said, is this the same model that you had in Afterlife? And actually, it was a new version that they created. Um, so I'm not sure if it was actually a hero prop or not, but he did tell me this was the interesting thing. So I asked him, like, how do they power this thing? Like, How do they charge it? And he said they actually take the whole thing apart and put new batteries in because they don't want anything on it to look like there's a charging port which I thought was pretty cool. Um, but no, it, it, the batteries were dead, so unfortunately, no. Nerd is saying, am I a SAG member? I'm not, because everything I did was um, UK-based, so it would have been equity in the UK, uh, but I never, in fact, applied for an equity card myself. Um, Big Show is saying, Henry Cavill left the Witcher series to start filming a whole new series of films for Warhammer 40K that's being bankrolled by Amazon, I heard this at Warhammer World in Nottingham, UK. Yeah. Um, and Henry Cavill made an announcement about this himself. Um, he's a massive fan of Warhammer. My eldest son, Jacob, huge fan of Warhammer. I have to admit to have been painted several Warhammer figures and played Warhammer myself in the past. And so if they can bring that story of Warhammer from the games to life really, really well, I'm, a, I'm for it. I'm in for it because that's a great universe. So many stories can be told. I'm really intrigued to understand what character Henry Cavill is going to play. It'd be very interesting to see. Um, Ectotrip is asking, what movies made in the past five years do I think people are going to remember in 40 years? What a great question. Uh, I think Dune will be remembered in 40 years and still be beloved. Whatever you think of it, whether you like it or not, it is very well made. Um, gosh, I'm going to need to do some thinking on that question because it's a really good one. You always come up with good questions. <laughs> um, that's a hard one. I'm going to have to think on it some more because um, my mind goes immediately to the, the films I really love and enjoy. Um, but do they have the staying power you see, I still, I think that still some of the movies that Spielberg is making now, he's making, I think he's in that part of his career where he's making what he wants to make. Um, like his autobiographical movie, um, him making a musical, he's always wanted to do a musical. The first musical he did didn't go well, and so he made another one. And I think those things are going to endure. Um, I need to come back to you on that. I'm going to think about it. I need to examine my thoughts. <laughs> it's a great question. Uh, Ghostbusters Collector is saying they could make an entire film based on the Possessor Ghost. They could. Uh, a chase movie in real time where the Ghostbusters pursue the Possessor Ghost all over New York. Yeah. And I think, I mean, if they're going to do the cartoon, which I know they are, that would be a great episode, right? Just a whole episode on the Possessor Ghost because it's a scary ghost. And w what happened to the Possessor Ghost? Did, like, did Slimer, we know Slimer ate the pizza the Possessor Ghost was possessing is... Slimer possessed by the possessor? I don't know. What happens there? How does that work on a spiritual basis? <laughs> I don't know. 
Hello, Springtrap. Welcome to the chat. Um, are you the real Springtrap from Five Nights at Freddy's? If so, that's scary. <laughs> uh, Cameron, oh, I think you're talking about your movie. The title will vanish when we look to the right and music playing the Ecto Force. Okay, cool. So, yeah, that, that makes sense. I get it. Ghostbusters Collector, um, you had a film company. That's impressive. <laughs> Did you go to film school? I did not go to film school. Uh, I have a weird story about this. So I love, I always loved movies. I always wanted to make a movie and I decided to just make one. And so I made a film um, and um, it took a while because I was making it myself. It was shot back in the day on a camcorder. So it was very, lo super low budget. Um, but the story was about a family that survived a kind of terrorist attack that took over the UK. That was the kind of story idea. Um, and um, these kids were stranded out in this kind of remote part of the, the UK, out in Wales, in the middle of nowhere. And it was about how they survived. So it was like the whole movie covers each season of the year. Um, and they have no electricity and they have to figure out what they're doing and they're all teenagers together there's no adults so they're all kids and that was the story um and so uh yeah i i didn't go to film school for that and i kind of learned from just doing it um and then the film did well a producer saw it uh based in wales and they said they put me in touch with a, an editor and said hey we like the movie but it could do with a little bit of tight tightening up and so i was very blessed to sit next to this incredibly talented editor that had edited Shadowlands in this edit suite. It was kind of a funny experience. I was pretty young at the time and I kind of walked into this edit suite. They kept this guy out at kind of in a corner of the of the edit of the you know kind of the, the production studios. He had this big room and he was a chain smoker. He just smoked all day. <laughs> so I sat in the corner of this guy smoking cigarettes one after the other after the other. Really talented editor. And so I I had a lot of film schooling sat just watching this guy re-edit my movie. It was such an interesting experience to see how you could tighten something up. And so I got a lot of editing experience from that. And then um, the film did well at, at festivals. And so I kind of left my full-time job at that time and set up a film production company. And that was, you know, a huge thing. But um, the funny thing, kind of come back to your question about film school, is that um, based on my experience of actually shooting a movie, making a movie, distributing a movie, getting out there, going to film festivals all over the world with the movie, um, a university reached out to me and asked me if I would teach filmmaking. <laughs> so I went from figuring out how to make a movie for myself to teaching other people how to make movies. Um, and I was a lecturer in film and TV production for quite a long time. And at the same time, shot another movie and made a documentary and produced I've done loads of corporate film, loads and loads of corporate video and corporate filmmaking. Um, so yeah, that's my background, but I'm completely self-taught. Um, but I enjoy it, which is kind of what was the point of this YouTube channel. You know, I wanted to keep, when I stopped doing that full time um, and moved back to kind of working for somebody else, I just needed a creative outlet. So this was why I produced my YouTube channel. And um, I'm super grateful that you know, you guys are here interested in chatting with me and, and kind of part of this little community. And so it's kind of fun to, to, to have that. But yeah, I mean, that's a little bit of my story. So I didn't go to film school, but I ended up teaching at film school, <laughs> which is really weird that that happened. Um, Kermit the Human. Uh, I've watched all the Jurassic Park movies except Dominion. And I've spent way too much time reading and watching the series. I really need to do something better with my life. I think that's fine. I think uh, spending all that time watching and getting into Jurassic Park is 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 awesome. Jurassic Park had a profound effect on me. Um, it was such a groundbreaking movie in so many ways. I think we forget that now. How groundbreaking it was from a computer graphics point of view, from a movie point of view, um, and what an amazing achievement for Steven Spielberg that he literally went back to back from Jurassic Park straight onto directing Schindler's List, which is, you know, a landmark movie for him. Both of those movies were incredible, and I think, you know, I'm a huge fan of Spielberg, and as I said before, I, I ha had the opportunity to meet him last year, um, and what a wonderful, wonderful human he was really really great and my favorite filmmaker of all time um 
uh, nerd affiliates like Henry Cavill is a huge nerd. One of us, one of us. Yes, Henry Cavill is a massive nerd. I love that about him. Um, I just wish I looked as great as he did. <laughs> if all nerds looked like Henry Cavill, we would not get the rap that we get today, right? <laughs> but I, his story's great. And if you don't know his story, I mean, he, he was, you know, a, a chubby kid at school and he was called Fat Cavill by the other kids at school, which is crazy to think of that. And, you know, he was geeky and he was into computer games and he was into Warhammer um, and he was not the cool kid. And uh, now he's more than the cool kid. Uh, he's a great story. Love Henry Cavill. How can you not love Henry Cavill? Yeah, great comment, nerd. Um, Ghostbusters Collector, any ideas for a new tech in the next Ghostbusters film? How about a proton pack with a built-in jetpack? <laughs> that would be great. You don't need a drone anymore. You just have a jetpack proton pack and you can fly up after the sewer dragon and get it. Um, tech ideas of my own. I'm always up for anything new tech, Ghostbusters. Somebody in a Reddit conversation coined a really cool um, uh, type of verbiage for describing the tech in Ghostbusters and called it, um, what was it? Uh, I've forgotten it now. Dang it. Oh, Ectopunk called the style of Ghostbusters technology ectopunk. I quite like that. But, and you can see that style coming out in, in uh, Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, because even in the lab, which is advanced, they still have this kind of 80s vibe to the technology, which doesn't necessarily make sense, but is cool. I like it. Um, uh, and, you know, maybe there's some science that we'll know more about. Maybe there's something about technology that's older that's not as dependent on the stuff that we have today, more kind of like microprocessor based, that is more in tune with the spiritual forces of Ghostbusters. I don't know, maybe that's the reason, but uh, um, I like the vibe of it. Uh, Big Show is saying, I was told by manager at Warhammer World that Cavill will not be playing a Space Marine. Interesting, interesting. Because that would have been my thought as well which was my go-to. Yeah, see, we're on the same page. That's what I thought. I thought he'd be playing a Space Marine, maybe with a huge cigar. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, we will find out. We'll find out. Kermit the Human is saying, uh, Steven Spielberg is really good at movies, especially with Jaws and Jurassic Park, but will Steven Spielberg be remembered as a good movie director in a long time from now? I think so, I, because I think... I, I just... I've studied his films a lot, and he, I think, as a, he's just a great director, a great storyteller. And I think, just like, um, uh, oh, dude, this is always the point in the live stream where I start to lose my ability to human because I've been streaming for almost 100 minutes. <laughs> People's names start to leave my brain. Alfred Hitchcock, that was where I was going with this. Um, Alfred Hitchcock is still remembered because of his directorial style and because of the stories that he told that he he chose to tell and because his movies are still his his movies are still worth watching today and so I think I, I can't see a time where Steven Spielberg at least for me where Steven Spielberg movies won't be worth watching from a story from a directorial standpoint so that's my point of view on Spielberg um and yeah, I mean, he just has inspired me massively. Um, Ectotrip. Um, hi, Ectotrip. Um, Final Empire, kind of... Final Empire. <laughs> Frozen Empire. Effie. Kind of shows the reason why Spielberg has locked the, locked the Back to the Future franchise. <laughs> yeah, uh, and actually, I mean, it wasn't Spielberg that locked it. It's been more... Um, uh, Bob Gale and Robert Zemeckis that have done that. I mean, obviously Spielberg was a producer on Back to the Future. But yeah, they, they just want to keep it as it is. And I think, it, you know, I go back to that franchise. I, I, when I watch it, um, I always, always love it. So, um, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's a fair point, Ectotrip. It's a fair point. Uh, Ghostbusters Collector, how about a desolidifier. Firing it at a solid object such as walls momentarily changes their atomic structure, making it possible to pass through in pursuit of ghosts. I like that idea. That is a very cool idea for a weapon. I mean, the Ghostbusters are known for creating masses of destruction, aren't they, when they do what they do? <laughs> They're always... 
destroying everything. Um, so uh, why not create a weapon that that temporarily changes matter so that they don't destroy it, or maybe it will just remain non-solid forever. So you know, there's some they change. I don't know. I could see a scene where they have to run through some restaurant or something, and they make this wall, and the guy tries to put his cup down on the table, and it looks solid, but it isn't, and his cup just drops through it. I mean, there's plenty of comedic opportunity for a piece of technology like that, which is, you know, part of the point, right? The tech is cool and also comedic. I mean, it's so in ingrained in culture now, but the idea that these proton throwers in Ghostbusters don't even fire straight, right? <laughs> They fire all over the place and create masses of damage, which was part of the humor of it. Was that they wreck, you know, in the first Ghostbusters movie, they wreck that ballroom. Um, you know, the, the great moment where Egon is just firing into the bar and he just can't stop. And it's like, whoa, 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 nice shooting text. You know, that whole sequence is amazing. So I think any technology that can add a modicum of, you know, create space for humor in the story, I'm, I'm definitely up for. Uh, so I think that's a that's a terrific, a terrific idea. Cool. Wow. Gosh, those were a great set of questions, folks. I really enjoyed all your thoughts and your questions there. That was a lot of fun reading through all of that stuff. Um, and, and uh, you know, a lot of people, there's, what, what I'm loving about this chat is that there's folks that um, I don't think have been on our chat before, so it's great, really great to have you here. Uh, welcome and great questions from people. And if you're new and you like this conversation, please feel free to hit subscribe. You don't have to, but if you want to, uh, feel free to do so. Um, uh, you're very welcome. And, um, you know, conversations like this aren't all we do on this channel. So um, I do uh, and have done more live streaming of late because um, people seem to really enjoy it. And I actually really enjoy it. I love these discussions. But there's loads of content on my YouTube um, that's, uh, you know, long form, short form videos, behind the scenes stuff, uh, stuff about Ghostbusters, stuff about Jurassic Park, um, stuff about uh, uh, Back to the Future um, and uh, even more. Um, and one of the things I haven't talked about much actually uh, on this channel is that one of my first ever videos that I did was making a, a spaceship set uh, with my family. And I have a whole movie that we made talking about movie making, a short film, a uh, spaceship film um, that I'm planning to bring out on this YouTube channel at some point in the future. Um, and a question to you, those of you that are, um, that, that are kind of been here in a, Thank you for hanging out with me. But those folks that are kind of regular visitors to the channel, I'm thinking of setting up a, a membership space for my YouTube. It's not something that I've done uh, before. Um, I'm not very familiar with it. But I, I get I create so much stuff that I cut out of my videos because you're trying to create a YouTube style uh, video. And so you're always cutting it down and cutting it back. Um, so uh, I, you know, um, a question to you if you're kind of a regular here and watch me, you know, would you be interested in longer longer behind the scenes videos of me uh, making stuff and doing things that uh, are, you know, broader than the stuff I get to put up there? Because sometimes I edit this stuff and my first cut is like 24 minutes and I'm cutting these things down to 10 so that they, they're, you know, a YouTube, uh, a YouTube based thing. So my thought was to create somewhere where we maybe had, I had space to share some of the stuff I cut, like all the deleted pieces and you could see them. And then the other thing I was thinking of doing was having um, a show, like a live show um, that is kind of behind the Explorer, <laughs> behind the Experience Explorer, uh, with the intent of um, kind of picking apart some of the videos and doing that um, as an exclusive thing for members. So it's kind of like a, a show, but it's also live. And then you get to rewatch it if you weren't able to be there live. Um, Ectotrip saying, hell yeah. All right, that's good enough for me. <laughs> that's good enough for me. Um, and if you've got any ideas for what, even if you're not interested in, you know, becoming a member of my channel, if you've seen any great things that you've seen other people do for memberships that you really like, that you think are really valuable, please tell me in chat. I'm really interested to know from you what would make a membership worthwhile. So, I, I mean, I'm members of other people's YouTube channels. I really love... Um, uh, 
gosh, what, what are they called? Nerdforge. I don't know if you you know Nerdforge. <laughs> love, love Nerdforge. Um, I'm a member of Adam Savage's Tested channel, so I'm familiar with how they do their stuff. But if there's some cool stuff that you think are really good uh, perks for being a member or on a, you know a YouTube member, let me know, and I'll I'll happily consider them. Uh, Rider Weird Projects is saying hi, hi Rider Weird Projects. I like your name. That's awesome. Uh, Ah, Big Show is saying, are we overdue a new Star Trek film? I would assume the next generation cast are too old uh, to wheel out again. New ship, new crew, maybe DS9-based film reboot? That is a really good... Um, it's a good question. So I don't know if you've seen this, but I just learned today through social media that there's a final... <coughs> excuse me. Final... Kelvin timeline movie coming out, so that's with the um, the Chris Pine cast. They're doing a final one of those, so it will be the fourth and final one of those movies. And then Star Trek have also announced another, what they're calling Star Trek origin movie. No idea what that means, but yes, we are overdue a Star Trek movie. I think that they, I, 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 I'm a Star Trek fan um, as well. And I think that the T I wasn't a fan when they rebooted the TV shows, started with, with um, those with Discovery. I wasn't really a massive fan of Discovery, but I've kind of come to like it more and really liking Strange New Worlds because uh, it really feels like Star Trek to me. So I'm hopeful. I think it'll be fun to see what they, they come up with. Um, Ghostbuster Collector saying, why didn't the Ghostbusters ever get a com uh, competition in the ghost catching marketplace? That's a great question. Uh, I don't know. That would be a really cool idea for a story. Ghostbusters Collector, you really need to reach out. I think you and both Cameron, who have been writing in chat here, have got some good ideas for Ghostbusters story. I think you should be talking to Eric Reich and telling him your ideas. Um, yeah, some kind of other business would be, would be fun, uh, I think. And why didn't anyone else do it? It's a really good question. It's a really good question. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, Nerd of like saying, don't know we need a new movie for Star Trek because the shows are doing so well. Strange New Worlds is so good. I, I agree with you. I absolutely love Strange New World. The problem I get with it is when I start watching it, I just can't stop. <laughs> um, but it feels like original Trek, uh, but you know, in an up-to-date setting, and the stories have been just great. I've just, I've, I've loved it. Um, I haven't watched Lower Decks, but I need to. I hear very good things about it. And my understanding is that there's a Lower Decks crossover with Strange New Worlds. Uh, is I think, I think that's what happened. But I might be wrong about that. Um, yeah, and you're right. Discovery was a slow, slow build. Um, I wasn't a fan of it at the beginning. But then, um, kind of, I wanted to watch Strange New Worlds. So I kind of started watching the crossover when those characters come in and then go out to the next... And then I started watching Discovery when they kind of went far into the future and really been enjoying it since. Um, ah, this is a great question. Skelton saying, what do I think would have happened if they'd used a different car for Back to the Future? I don't know. It's a good question. You know, originally the script was written, um, it was going to be a refrigerator that they were going to travel in time in. A refrigerator. Can you imagine... Back to the Future with a refrigerator. <laughs> that would have been crazy. Um, you know, it'd been like the scene in uh, the fourth Indiana Jones with Indy getting into a refrigerator and then flying at more than 88 miles per hour, it appears, um, <laughs> and almost crashing into a gopher. Uh, but yeah, uh, so a different car. I don't know. I just can't in my mind ever think of anything but the DeLorean being the car. Um, maybe a Porsche. Um, but, you know, Doc says it needs to be stainless steel. So I guess it would have to be a Cybertruck today. <laughs> That's what it would have to be. Can a Cybertruck go 88? I don't know. I'm sure it can. But um, let's see. Uh, Note of feel like saying, yes, Lower Decks and Strange New World crossover. Okay, then I need to watch the cartoon and catch up. Thank you for telling me that. Hector Tripp is saying, understand that you're just doing this channel since you love film and sharing your projects. But if you'd perhaps like a bigger audience, YouTube shorts are the way to go. Yeah, so I have done some shorts. Um, I, 
Exit trip. I would love ideas. If you think there's certain shorts that would work great for the kind of audience that um, I'm interested in building, let me know some ideas. Um, you know, I'm thinking of shorts of some of my builds, shorts of other things that I do. Um, shorts are a challenging thing to create um, and get traction with. Although I would say that because there's a massive interest in Ghostbusters at the moment, a lot of the shorts I created around the Ghostbusters behind the scenes are on the uptick. So I've had loads of short views lately in, in, the, in the thousands and thousands. Um, so I know that you're right about that. Um, Nerd Affiliated saying, uh, saw the engineer from Discovery who controls the Spore Drive this week. Oh, really? <laughs> and he and his family are here for his musical in Boston. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's very, very cool. Uh, Gavin uh, Hayden, hello, Gavin. Welcome. Um, Ghostbusters Collect saying, do you think there will be more of a wait until the next Ghostbusters film? I think undoubtedly, yes. I think, let's see how the rest of the international releases go. Um, and I think they're going to wait a bit for the cartoon. I think that the cartoon is going to help get a younger audience back into Ghostbusters is my thought. And when I say younger, I mean really younger, like, you know, Saturday morning, morning cartoon level audience is what I mean. <laughs> uh, Ectotrip is saying, with my other channel, I kind of just use some nostalgic music and things people don't usually see. Oh, interesting. Using Rubik Cubes, other toys from the 80s. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Sometimes people, I mean, sometimes people have said that um, a good thing to do would be for me to, I mean, one of the videos I keep saying I'm going to do is a tour of this, this geeky basement. And uh, there's a lot of stuff in here that's, that's old and cool um, that I'm sure people would be interested in. So, yeah, that's definitely a thing for me to think about and consider doing. <laughs> Hector Tripp's saying, yes, please. Yeah, I mean, part of me was thinking that maybe that's a thing for the, you know, the kind of thing for a membership, uh, that I would do that. Um, for members first and then share it with a, a wider community. That was my thought. Um, Gavin is saying, I wish they would bring back the real Ghostbusters. Yeah, I think that... Um, yeah, we talked about this a little bit earlier. I, 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 they are doing a cartoon. They are doing a Ghostbusters cartoon. It's definitely happening. It's They're working with Netflix on it. Obviously, Netflix were, were very successful at the, at the Jurassic Park um, kind of animated series that they did, Camp... Cretaceous. So I think that they're assuming that work with Netflix will provide them with a similar outlet for Ghostbusters. So um, let's see. I don't know how real Ghostbusters is going to be, whether it's going to be based on characters we have in the new movies, whether it's going to be Phoebe and podcasts. I just just don't know. Uh, so it'll be interesting to find out. Um, but yeah, um, I, d I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Real Ghostbusters was great. So, um, you know, I, I don't think they'll bring that back in the way that it was, but I think that they'll try and do something new and hopefully it's got that kind of vibe to it. Um, uh, Cameron saying, uh, making a short film first that will have teenagers taking on evil uh, during spring break. And we'll have a romance, action, adventure, sci-fi and comedy and horror fantasy. That is an original story. Yeah, good for you, Cameron. Um, I'm all for people making their own movies and coming up with their own stories. I mean, that's literally what I did, and um, I loved doing it. Uh, you know, the best way to become a filmmaker is just to do it. Grab some friends, come up with a script, and just do it. Uh, uh, do it as much as you can. Um, Ghostbusters Collector, how about an R-rated Ghostbusters? Horrific, gory, dark, and dangerous version of the Ghostbusters geared towards an adult audience. Kind of like the um, the Deadpool of the Marvel world, I think is what I'm hearing here. Yeah, um, I you know, it'd have to be worth it, <laughs> if that makes any sense. It would have to be worth it for, to, to do that. But yeah, it, it could work. Uh, Gavin's asking me, is the Ecto I have a 59? So actually, it's not my Ecto. It's um, uh, Nick's Ecto. So I'm part of the team. I do the video stuff for them. Um, but uh, it is uh, an original. It's the same year as the car from the original movie. So it's a, a Miller Meteor. Um, uh, and yeah, it's, it's the real deal. And it is a beautiful car. Absolutely beautiful. 
Um, we live streamed from that car earlier in the week, and I don't know if, if you were able to watch that, but, um, and if you don't know anything about that and you're new to this channel, um, the, uh, the car is gonna be at Ghostbusters um, 40th anniversary celebration in New York at the Firehouse. And Nick is offering um, a, a free tour. It's a competition for a free tour in the car the day of Ghostbusters. So oh, Gavin said he did, he did watch that. So yeah, so if you want a free tour in the Ecto-1 through the streets of New York on Ghostbusters Day, um, you need to check out um, Ecto-1NJ on Instagram. Reach out to, to them and you can uh, apply tell you have to, you have to tell them why you would be a good candidate <laughs> and part of the deal is um that we are making uh video recordings of people riding in the ecto talking about their experience of um of ghostbusters um and so um we're offering it as a prize for somebody to have the experience of riding in the ecto and talk about their love of ghostbusters um skeleton's asking me what's my favorite car from a movie but you can't say from Ghostbusters or Back to the Future. <laughs> uh, Ecto Trip, you are a good candidate. Yeah, right, right to right to Nick. Right, right to Nick. Get your name in there. My favourite car from a movie, but you can't say Ghostbusters or Back to the Future. Uh, I think my favourite car then would have to be the Jurassic Park Explorer, uh, the electric one that gets attacked by the T Rex. That would be a cool car uh, to have an experience. Uh, Ghostbusters Collector saying, did you go to the Ghostbusters 50, uh, 50, what am I talking about? 35th anniversary uh, at Ghost Core. I did not, but I saw it online. Um, I didn't go then, uh, especially because I'm the kind of other side of the country. Um, it wasn't the first first thing for me to be able to do at that time. But um, it, it looked like a lot of fun. Um, Stephanie saying, I'm a photographer and a YouTuber and would love to make photos and video of the Ecto. Well, I mean, Stephanie, come to uh, Ghostbusters Day. My understanding is there's going to be Ectos from all the movies. All the different Ectos are going to be at the firehouse that day. So it would be a great, uh, you know, a great, a great opportunity to get some great photos and great content. Um, Ecto Trip, I love it to have an R rating if it's got lots of corny but legendary traditional one-liners like the old movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I understand. I think, um, I, yeah, I mean, that there's, it's an interesting thing, right, isn't it? There's something about the era that that movie was made in, the 80s. I think there's something about the freeness of the comedy uh, in that that um, is not the kind of see thing that you see it in movies of that rating anymore. So it's, it's an interesting point that you make. Uh, there's a Jeep Wrangler that's decked out like the Jurassic Park Jeep. Yeah, I mean, that would be near your house. That, that's cool. Yeah, I mean, a Jurassic Park Jeep would also be fun. Um, but uh, yeah, in my mind, kind of the Ecto-1 and the DeLorean and the Jeeps uh, or cars from uh, Jurassic Park are definitely the ones that, um, uh, that I love. Skelton saying, do you think older movies are better than newer movies now? Um, it depends. So I think that we've fallen into the trap um, of doing anything we want with a movie because we can make it with computer graphics, right? So um, there's some really good examples of movies now that have computer graphics sequences in them that don't look as good as Jurassic Park, right? Um, and that's because stuff can be more done more cheaply and more quickly, and there isn't necessarily the thought for quality that there is that 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 there is when you're kind of trying to struggle. And I, you know, Star Wars is a really good example of this. Star Wars was really struggling as a film, and if you watched any documentaries about the making of Star Wars. That are you know truthful <laughs> about what happened. That was a really tough experience for George George Lucas. Financially challenging, um, and so a lot of the decisions that were made on that movie came down to 
the creativity that emerges from being challenged with, we haven't got this, or we haven't got the right, the money for this, or whatever it is. Um, and so uh, I think that sometimes scarcity of resources help increase a level of creativity that you don't always see um, in movies today. And, and I'm just kind of sick of seeing movies that where so much is done with computer graphics and it could have been done differently or you just didn't even need that scene in, in a movie. Um, but then we have really great examples of amazing computer graphics in like the Planet of the Apes series, the uh, animation and attention to detail in the movie. I mean, it's wetter digital, so it's going to be amazing anyway. Um, so I, I think... I think there are still great movies today. I think that probably back in the day, back in the 80s, uh, there were just as many bad movies as there are today. <laughs> um, and it, we remember more the, we remember the classics, the really good ones. Those are the ones that have carried on. And I think the same thing will happen now. I think the ones that aren't great will disappear. And I think that the ones that hold up over time will remain. So that's hopefully it's a helpful answer. <laughs> um, uh, let's see, Ecto Trip is saying, would have been really fun to actually see the Ecto 88 in uh, RP1, but copyright is a thing, yeah. <laughs> yes, it is a thing, that's true. And they're different companies that own those things. Um, Ghostbusters Collector, do I still buy DVDs and Blu-ray? I still buy Blu-ray. Um, I find that the video quality and the sound quality is much better on a Blu-ray than streaming anything. Um, and I enjoy having a tactile copy. And I love special features. We don't have enough special features these days. And I love those. Um, Gavin is saying there's a, a, a 64 Cadillac near Chicago. And I want to, I want to get so bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, if I had the money for a, for a Cadillac uh, uh, Ecto, I, I'd go for it. Uh, Phoenix Miles, hello, Phoenix. Uh, some movies are gems, and gems are uh, delicate to handle. Love that sentiment. Yeah, you're right. Uh, Ecto Trip, Planet of the Apes, another Danny score. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> Ghostbusters Collector, there are so many bad 80s movies. There are. Like I said, uh, I, I think time and forgetting the bad movies that were out then makes us think that movies were better back then. Um, but I'm not sure they were. I think there are just as many bad movies now as there were then. They're just bad in a different way, probably. Do I like the movie called Christine? Yes, I do, Skelton. I do indeed. And I think we talked about Christine earlier. Uh, I like the original. Um, I was talking with my buddy about the original, and I know that they're making a remake. And the, uh, the jury's out on whether we need a remake or not. Uh, Ghostbusters Collect saying uh, that they still buy DVDs. Uh, first player from 1999 and still buy DVDs. That's cool. Uh, Gavin's saying, do I like the Fast and Furious saga? Um, I don't dislike it. I'm just not a massive fan of it. It's not really my thing. Um, and it's probably ruined for me by the Fast and Furious ride in Universal, which is terrible. <laughs> um, but... Um, I have seen some of them, and I don't dislike them, um, but I'm, I'm not, like, a, a, a huge fan. Um, well, cool. Oh, Ectotrip saying, just watched Loose Cannons, which is supposedly a bad movie, but to me, it was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in a good five months. Too funny to see uh, Aykroyd howling or acting like Pee-wee. <laughs> and, and I was talking about this earlier, I think, Ecto, before you, before you uh, joined the call that... The call. <laughs> I'm on too many virtual calls for my job. That's why I call this a call. Uh, on the live stream, um, is that it's really interesting what stuff ever, anyone likes, right? There's stuff that I like that people think's terrible, but I just, you know, everyone has the things that they like and that they don't like, and that's kind of okay. You know, like um, an example for me of a movie that people didn't like, but that I really liked is The Island, um, which you know, is um, 
quite an over the top movie and didn't perform particularly well, but I really, really liked it. And I still really, really like it. And I, I think it's another one of those movies that kind of got panned by critics, but actually is good. If you've not seen The Island, go check out The Island. It's, I think it's really, really fun. Um, Ghostbuster Collector saying, I think Christine was possessed by the possessor ghost from Frozen Empire. <laughs> yes, maybe Christine and Ghostbusters are in the same universe. That would be interesting. We need a crossover movie. Uh, oh, uh, Gavin saying he didn't, has anyone asked this, what's playing on the TV? Uh, this is uh, my YouTube channel actually that's playing on the TV in the background. I've got uh, Back to the Future, the computer game, the 8-bit version on this screen. And then over here, this is probably an ad now that's playing because this is just YouTube playing in the background. Yeah, it's an insurance ad. Here we are. This is uh, the video of me riding through the streets of New York in the Ecto. Uh, the Ecto-1 NJ. This is the very first time I saw this car. Um, and if you've not seen this video, it's on my channel. Uh, hitting subscribe is the easiest way to access everything. But it's the very first time uh, that I got to ride in the Ecto-1 through the streets of New York. And it was amazing. It was amazing. Go check out the video. It's fun. You'll see me looking very excited and very red in the face. There I am. <laughs> um, Ghostbuster Collector, where am I? Uh, right now, I'm in my geeky basement. This is where I am. And I live in uh, New Jersey. Uh, Stephanie's saying uh, an awesome video. Uh, <coughs> yeah, it's a trip in my geek crib. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. I love it. Uh, oh, what if Back to the Future took a darker turn and went back to World War II? Yeah, that would be dark. Um, I think then, I mean, if you go there, then you have to go into the whole, you know, uh, should we assassinate Hitler kind of storyline, right? <laughs> that's, the, that's the kind of uh, the storyline that happens, happens there. There's a whole, um, there's a whole uh, if you've ever watched Doctor Who, there's a whole Doctor Who story on that very topic about changing the world dramatically uh, like that. Oh, Stephanie's from Wayne. There you go, yeah. I'm not, I'm not that far from you. I know Wayne very well. In fact... I may have even eaten a McDonald's in Wayne this morning. <laughs> um, Ghostbuster Collector saying, what made me decide to move to America? Well, um, my company transferred me here. So I work in New York City. So that was the reason I came here. Um, but I also wanted to, I mean, when you get asked if you want to move somewhere else and have that kind of experience and the company's going to pay for it, it's the kind of thing that I didn't feel like, we didn't feel, my wife and I didn't feel like we should turn it down. And so it's been a really good experience, actually. I think that um, I would highly recommend to anyone, if you can do it, the opportunity to move to a different cult country and experience a different culture. Because uh, often, as Brits, I think we think that we're very similar to Americans, and we are in many ways. And we're also very different in many ways as well. Um, and the culture here is actually dramatically different. And of course, it depends on which state you're in as well, right? New Jersey is, has one culture, very different culture to Texas, or if you go out to California. Um, and so um, I've really valued the experience of living somewhere else and the impact that that's had on me and the way I think. Um, so yeah, that's, but that's the reason it was kind of like a, uh, yeah. Oh, Stephanie's like, she goes to that McDonald's. Hey, well, you know, if you see me there one day, just come say hi. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> Ghostbuster Collector is asking, what do I do when I'm not doing YouTube videos? So um, I actually run experiential events uh, for clients. So I help clients to have, a, I suppose, a different experience to their day-to-day -day office experience that's intended to help them get in the right state of mind to... Um, address a problem in a different way. Um, so, you know, imagine a workshop, but uh, a workshop that's actually designed to help you literally start to think in a different way and take you out of yourself. And we do that with a lot of creativity. We create cool environments to help people uh, think differently. We theme our sessions. Um, and so they're experiential, you know, moments but they're also about solving for something very specific so that's what i do and i'm based i'm based out of new york city doing that um 
Let's see. Uh, uh, Ector saying, on the tip border of the west side of Jersey, Atlantic Highlands, access to lots of uh, ferries that take you directly to Wall Street, which is easier than driving from Brooklyn to Manhattan. Yes. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is, and it's also a great way to enter, uh, enter into the city that way. Um, so, uh, Gavin, sorry, I missed this one. Garen, Gavin, you said, uh, does anyone remember the scene in the one of the Indiana Jones movies where he meets Hitler? Yes, that was an amazing scene where he signs the very book that he's looking for. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great moment in that Indiana Jones movie. It's fantastic. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Skelton saying, was it weird for the first time driving on the right side of the road instead of the left side? Uh, uh uh, you're not being rude asking it. Yeah, it's always weird. Um, I traveled to the US quite a lot of times before we moved here anyway, so I was kind of used to that transition. Um, in fact, the very first time we we came here, my wife and I came here before we had any kids, we did a road trip and drove, um, uh, you know, a long, a long way through the US, so we kind of got used to it. And now I've lived here and it's... I it's natural for me to be on that side of the road, <coughs> excuse me, but also um, when I go back to the UK, because I drove on the other side of the road for so long, it's an easy transition for me. So um, yeah, it is weird, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it is weird, but you get used to it pretty quickly. Um, okay, people chatting to each other uh, in chat. Uh, Ghostbusters Collector, what if anything, <laughs> what, what, I like that question, what if anything uh, do I miss about England? I think the thing I miss most about England is my good friends there. I have some very good friends that um, it would, I would love to see. I have a very good friend that comes and helps me, has at least helped me for the last couple of years when I do my Halloween experience here at my home. Um, so it's fun to do that. Um, and I miss uh, family uh, back there. Um, uh, and I miss some of the sensibilities. I mean, again, I think, you know, New Jersey and New York, customer service is its own approach to the world. <laughs> In Britain, I think, uh, you know, um, it's pretty different. I think there's just a kind of slight, uh, just a different approach to politeness in, in Britain. Uh, again, it depends on where you are in Britain, right? You know that uh, Britain's got different cultures across it as well. Um, but so I miss some of those things. I miss free healthcare. <laughs> um, I miss the NHS. Uh, but I, I, there's lots of things that I don't miss and, and lots of things I love about living here. Um, so yeah, if you could merge the two cultures together, it would be perfect. Um, so let's see. Uh, Jason is saying, did you ever get into Smallville? Um, and... They stumbled on the farm outside Langley uh, in Canada and knew where it was instantly. So I did watch Smallville for a while. I didn't get into it massively. Um, it was at a time in my life where it wasn't something I was I was really following at that time. Um, but I have watched it and, and it is good. So that's cool that you saw the actual farm from Smallville. Um, right, sorry, but... Uh, what's fandom foyer live? This. <laughs> this is the fandom foyer. This space. I've said, I'm calling this this stream the fandom foyer because we're fans and we're uh, geeks gathering together. So that, that was a, a way for me to describe this live stream as a spot for fans to chat and, and discuss uh, stuff. That was me trying to be funny with a bit of alliteration. <laughs> Cameron's saying, do you think we'll get a new Terminator movie? Um, I, I heard rumors that there was, I think it, you know, it's very much on the theme of this conversation, right? Of continuing things on and on and on. Um, sadly, I don't think those movies have got better over time, unfortunately. Um, I wish they had. I liked some of the earlier extensions to the franchise, but they, nothing's going to be as good as Terminator 2. It's one of my all time favorite movies. Do we need another movie? If they can come up with a good story, I'm interested. Um, 
And Stephanie's saying, yeah, we do have a different approach. I'm assuming you're referring to my customer service <laughs> comment. Uh, uh, do I intend on moving back to the UK eventually? Um, well, I, I don't know. I, my answer to that question is, this is home right now. This is our home for now. Uh, Rebecca, hi, how are you? Welcome to the stream. Good to see you here. Uh, Skullin is saying, do you think old cars are nicer to drive? Newer cars, for me, it's a wonderful experience. Oh, well, there's a whole different thing, isn't it? Like, um, an old car is an experience unto itself. Um, but when you get in a brand new car, you know, that experience when you, you know, step, when you rent a car and you get a really nice one when you rent one and you drive it and it's just got everything. And you're like, oh, this is nice. So... They're just very different experiences. One, one is a, an experience of going back in time. The other is an experience of comfort <laughs> and safety, hopefully. Um, let's see. Just wondering, are you going to... This is from Gavin. Uh, are you going to do any live streams of the Ghostbusters or Back to the Future computer games? Oh, well, that's interesting. I hadn't even thought of doing that. If that's something you're interested in, I, I'm, I, I love playing computer games. I can't tell you that I'm very good at playing computer games. I used to be better when I was younger, when I had more time to play computer games. Um, but yeah, I mean, if that's something you're interested in, maybe I'll consider doing that. Oh, so Scotland's saying, do you think old cars are better to drive than newer cars? Um, from the experience, like driving in the Ecto is a whole experience, so I like that experience. But is it a be better feeling? I feel much safer in a newer car <laughs> than I do in an older car. Um, and, uh, and yeah, they're, they're harder to manage, I think. It depends on the car, right? The make and the brand. Uh, and Stephanie's saying, yes, sir. <laughs> they were referring to the customer service. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. The customer service is very, very different. The other thing I, I struggle with sometimes is um, people don't always understand my accent. Uh, when I'm out, uh, especially at a drive through So um, when I say, can I have some water? Um, if the person that's, um, you know, serving, if English isn't their first language, understanding my accent is really hard for them. And so I've had to adopt what I call my fast food ordering transatlantic accent, where I have to say water. <laughs> Otherwise, people don't understand. I'll have a water. And then they get it. They know I'm, I'm ordering a water. But um, we had a funny experience when we first moved here. My wife asked my daughter to go and ask somebody for a jug of water. Um, so my daughter goes and says, oh, can we have, get a jug of water, please? And the, the person serving was like, a what? A what? It's like, a, a jug of water? It's like, water? <laughs> and like, oh, water. You want water? Like, yeah, but a jug. Oh, you mean a pitcher of water? And she's like, no, I actually want real water. I don't want a pitcher of water. <laughs> it's this massive confusion. It's very funny. Um, these are the things that we go through as Brits uh, when we come to America, because we just use different words for things. Um, uh, Ectotrip, old cars feel like couches, newer cars feel like a computer, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I do know what you mean. Yes, I do find older seat, seats in older cars much more comfortable. Newer cars have much firmer seats and don't feel as comfortable from a seating point of view as the older cars you two. Yeah, I like certainly years ago when I first came to America and started driving cars here, I used to joke that driving an American car, the difference between a British car and an American car is in an American car, you feel like you're driving a sofa. So comfortable <laughs> to drive. Um, uh, Skelton is saying, uh, you have a point. I have an old 58 Pontiac, Straddle Chief. Uh, the color of it is burnt orange. Oh yeah, that burnt orange, that kind of, uh, that's a very classic color known as copper color. It's a manual uh, three on a tree. There you go. Yeah, you see, there aren't many uh, stick shift uh, vehicles around uh, in the US, really. Everything in the UK is pretty much stick still. So when you drive a car in Britain, you have to learn to drive stick. And the interesting thing is my kids that have learned to drive in America um, have only learned to drive automatic transmission. And so if they go back to England, 
it's much harder to find an automatic vehicle as a rental over there because it's not the first thing that's a standard uh, for you. Um, so I'm grateful that I learned to drive stick in the UK and that everyone did. And in fact, if you if you pass your driving test in Britain in a in a, a automatic transmission vehicle, uh, then you have a different driver's license to somebody that's passed the driver's license with a stick shift. Um, because oh, hello, I think it saw my face over there and decided to. <laughs> that's the AI. See that? See that? I'm going to have to stand in front of myself. The AI. I've got an AI. Uh, uh, mount on this camera that's following me around and it's getting a bit confused there but yeah so uh, yeah different driver's licenses in britain if you don't learn to drive in a stick shift then you can't have a full driver's license um uh ghostbusters collector i read a great terminator script where the t100 was accidentally transported back to chicago in the 1940s uh where a desperate family bullied by a local mob befriended and use it to protect themselves. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. Uh, Michael, good evening, everyone. Hello, Michael. Happy Friday to you. Thank you for joining the stream. Skelton, my brother has an old uh, 71 Super Beetle that he's rebuilding. The engine, funny thing, when it warms up, it turns into a two-stroke, two-cylinder <laughs> engine. Uh, well, those Beetles, uh, those, those bugs... Uh, the engines, I mean, the engines of all those kind of smaller European star cars. I was talking about Mini Coopers earlier. Um, yeah, the engines on those things are a whole... The, the engines are super, super simple, um, which makes them very easy to repair. I mean, if you can find the parts these days, but compared to, you know, you, there's no computers in those things, but they do sound like a lawnmower engine. <laughs> They're probably not as advanced as most lawnmower engines these days. Um, Gavin is saying, do I have any Ecto models or toys? Uh, you know what, Gavin, I actually don't. Um, the, the only, the only car model that I really have, um, uh, close by right now is the, uh, is the DeLorean. So I've always loved the, the DeLorean time machine. I've actually got a couple of versions of the DeLorean time machine. And I actually, we talked about Jurassic Park cars as well. I've got a Jurassic Park Jeep. Uh, toy as well um, but yeah this is what I've got I don't have an Ecto and I really I really should get one because I do love the Ecto very much so um, it's just not something for whatever reason I don't know why you know it, sometimes you just don't get around to getting these things and part of it now is that you know if I want to see an Ecto I can just go and hang out with Nick and drive in a real one <laughs> so I don't need the toy uh, but um, I mean how cool is that car that's so iconic isn't it it's just amazing the most 80s thing you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> so yeah, and actually over here, um, let me see, I don't know if I, you can see this. I, I'm gonna have to move my head, hang on. I'll, I'll turn off the uh, the automatic stuff and I'll move, I'll move the camera manually. So I don't know if you can see it very well over here, but um, I'll move this. There's actually, um, over here, I've got the time circuit from Back to the Future. <laughs> and um, I've even got, an old Back to the Future game from the 80s that was on cassette. Look at that. <laughs> but this is my uh, this is my little 80s corner here. Hence why there's a, a Rubik's Cube there as well. And obviously the license plate. And there is another, um, there's another Ecto, uh, sorry, Ecto, there's another Time Machine toy that I've got here. And this is the, about the weirdest Back to the Future thing I have, which is this, which is the... Uh, Time Machine Scented Candle from Universal Studios. <laughs> that has to be the weirdest thing. And, you know, does it smell good? Not really. I don't think that that's what the Time Machine... I mean, I wish you could smell this. Here, have a smell. What does that smell like to you? <laughs> it, I don't think... I don't think that's what... I don't think that's what the Time Machine smelled like. Especially if Doc Brown had been in it a lot. I... I that's just my opinion anyway. <laughs> right, what are people saying? Uh, oh, Rebecca. Uh, oh, Ghostbusters. Uh, yeah, Ghostbusters Collector. Thank you for joining. Yeah, thank you very much. Great hanging out. Great questions for you today. Really appreciate it. Um, Rebecca, uh, headed to see the new Ghostbusters again in an hour. It's going to be my third time. Well done. 
well done, getting those numbers up. We were talking about this uh, earlier in the week, I think, uh, that I, I, you'll have seen it as many times as, no, I've seen it, I have seen it four times, I just remembered, yes, but you, you're getting there. The lava lamp is a throwback. Hey, I love a good lava lamp, you know. Um, this is this is my this is my 80s corner look. I've got an H 80s VHS player, some 80s cameras here. I've got a ghost trap down here at the bottom, you know, because obviously I've got a cassette player, you know, a Nintendo. <laughs> um, oh, this is uh, this is actually the Back to the Future game on here on the screen behind me. And then up here, uh, there's there's some cassette tapes. There's a like a, a Walkman here, um, and uh, you know you got to have a you got to have a Viewmaster if you want to go to the '80s. You got to have a Viewmaster. So yeah, this is just you know a little collection of '80s memorabilia up there. Uh, that, that's a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Cameron's watched it five times. Uh, Peter, hello, Peter. Peter has given me, uh, I think that looks like a monkey emoji. emoji. <laughs> More details, Minecraft. I'm not sure what you're saying, Peter, but um, if you're asking me if I like Minecraft, I do, very much so. Uh, Cameron's watched uh, Ghostbusters five times. Wow, that's crazy. Good for you. Um, Michael's saying, I, I would think the DeLorean time machine smelled like hot leather, electronics and aftershave. That's interesting. I'm going to smell this again now <laughs> because you said that. So this just smells like aftershave. I can't smell any leather. Maybe the candle needs to be burning for me to smell that. But yeah, I think you're probably right. The leather, I think maybe like some soldering that's happened um, and a bit of aftershave. Yeah, because I'm sure that I'm sure that Marty McFly smelled pretty good, right? I'm sure he had some good aftershave. He never says what he. Uh... Oh, car exhaust. Yeah, I mean, if you want car exhaust, just ride the Ecto One NJ. I mean, you're literally breathing the fumes in <laughs> the whole time. Uh, but yeah, Ecto Trip. Don't mean to be pushy uh, at all, but have you checked out any of my Rubik Cube shorts? At least the Ghostbusters one. No, I haven't, but I will um, after this. Uh, thank you for, and and you're very, very happy to like shout yourself out on the channel, Ectotrip. You're totally welcome to do that. Uh, don't feel bad about it at all. Um, that's cool, I will check them out. My my son is really into into uh, cubing. He's a cuba and um, pretty fast at solving a Rubik's Cube, actually. He's got a lot of different types of Rubik's Cubes, but uh, yeah, I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely check, I'll definitely check that out. Um, and I'm assuming it's on, is it on the Ectotrip channel or is it on the Pixel Cuba channel? Let me know and I will go to the right channel and find it. <laughs> cool. Well, I probably got about Pixel Cuba. Okay, I will go and check that out. So I've probably got about, about five more minutes before we, we call it quits for tonight because I've been streaming for a, <laughs> a long time. Uh, it says here I've been live for 142 minutes. That is crazy. That is absolutely crazy. Um, okay, so Gavin is saying, is Ghostbusters a book or a case up top? Oh, uh, let's see, what are we looking up at here? Uh, and I actually can't see everything you're seeing here. Um, oh, yeah, it's the book. You can see it right here. It's actually a book. It's quite hard for me to fish out, but it's a, a picture book uh, that was like a book for kids that had like a simplified story of Ghostbusters and then content. Uh, really good stills, actually, from the movie. They don't do things like that anymore, um, but that was a thing that um, they used to hand out a lot. Um, Oh, Rebecca's saying, very disappointed that YouTube doesn't always send me notifications for your lives. I'm sorry about that. Uh, we had a problem when we started today as well. So I, YouTube went a bit crazy. It created two copies of my live. I, I, I gave people, I don't know, about 10 minutes, 20 minutes notice that I was doing it and put it there. Um, 
I need to get better at, at scheduling these things because I'm not always, I wasn't even going to do this tonight, but um, I ended up rearranging my evening and, and then I thought, oh, actually, I could do a live stream tonight. Um, partly because I was thinking, I don't know what to post. Usually I post a new video at the weekends and I was like, what should I post this weekend that I've got time to edit? I thought maybe I'll just do a live stream <laughs> instead this week <laughs> for the weekend. And, and definitely next week, um, everyone voted and I'm gonna be doing a live from Dana Barrett's apartment uh, from New York during the week. I, again, I'll try and get better at scheduling these so that you guys know, uh, know when I'm gonna be doing them. Um, yeah, um, if you if you hit the notif notification button, um, you should it should notify you, right? Shouldn't it? I think it should. If you hit the bell on the so if, if when you go to the channel, again I can't see it the same here because I'm um, uh, looking at it in a different way to you guys. But I think if you hit the notify bell when you next to the subscribe button, it should notify you of when I put a new video up or when I go live. That's my understanding. Um, so yeah, but yeah, um, I'll be doing that. I haven't figured out quite what day next week I'm going to be doing that. Um, yeah, I've got to figure that out. It might be Thursday next week. Um, Thursday or Tuesday. It's probably going to be Thursday. But my um, it's spring break next week here. So that makes my week a little bit more complex. <laughs> um, yeah, Gavin's saying there's a drop down bar and you can choose what you want um, from the channel. So you can choose whether you want to be notified about stuff and, and what you want to be notified about. Cool. Well, before I go, any other questions or any other things you want to talk about? Uh, let's let's talk about it. And of course, I'm going to use this moment while I'm asking you to think about that for if if you're new here and you haven't been on this channel before, um, would love you to subscribe. Um, I'm always open to people dropping supers if they're if they're excited with this <laughs> content that I've been creating. You're very welcome to do so. Um, and it, you know, if uh, if you're interested in anything that's kind of geeky, it's, it's a fandom. This is a great channel for you. I create props. I do um, experiences with with fandom based things and um, follow particular franchises. A lot of content about Ghostbusters on my channel at the moment because we did behind the scenes in New York of the filming of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. All those videos are on the channel. Um, and if you're interested in building your own ghost trap or if you're interested in building an animatronic dinosaur, you find all that stuff here. The kind of, the, the theme of our channel is explore, experience, create, explore stuff, uh, experience stuff and then try and recreate that stuff and it's all really fandom and, and film based um, so uh, what are people asking here uh, Michael make sure you have the notification oh yeah uh, on your phone settings for YouTube as well that's true yeah if you if you notifications are turned off for YouTube it won't come to your phone um, Rebecca have I ever met Rick Moranis I have not that would be cool um, Rick Moranis lives in New York, so I keep hoping that I might bump into him at some point. Maybe, maybe, can you imagine if we stream next week uh, from, from, from Central Park, uh, Central Park West, uh, that we bump into Rick on the street? How amazing would that be? Let's see if that happens. <laughs> um, Inferno Randomus, do I have any signed movie posters? I don't have signed movie posters, but I do have um, some other signed things. Um, and actually, I'm not massively into signatures. I, I, I've been very grateful that I've met um, a bunch of different folks from movies and things. But what I tend to focus on is trying to have a, a moment with them. So I, I was talking earlier about um, meeting Steven Spielberg. I didn't ask for his signature. I just wanted to talk to him. And that was a really cool, cool experience. And it was kind of the same with the Frozen Empire premiere. So there's a video on the channel if you're new here that covers my uh, experience at the premiere. And I didn't get any, I personally didn't get any signatures at the premiere, but I did get to talk to these folks and see them, which was really fun. So, you know, spoke to McKenna a lot and, and to, to Logan Kim um, and, 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 uh, and other folks spoke to Gil Kennan, the director. Uh, that was all really fun. So, you know, if there's stuff, uh, those moments, so I, I try and get moments rather than collecting signatures. So that's my, um, my my kind of take on things but i do have some i do have some signatures that's not to say that i'm against them i just i it's just 
not what I think of first. Um, Gavin is saying, I want to do fake metal chipping on my ghost trap and PKE meter. How should I do it? That's a great question, Gavin. And before I answer it, question for you guys, especially the folks that are, are kind of regulars here, some of you are here that, that join from time to time. Would you be interested if I did a live of me working on um, any of my props? Because um, somebody made a suggestion that I could do a live tomorrow of me working on my, um, on my proton pack. Um, if you're interested in seeing stuff like that, just let me know in chat or, you know, tell me. I'd be very happy to just put the camera on for an hour or so and just talk through what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. Very happy to do that and take any questions on this. So, But this is a, a really good question um, uh, about the chipping. So there's a lot of different ways to do distressing on things. Um, one of the easiest ways to do it is to get um, a silver sharpie or similar, so you know that that is you know like that very wet kind of liquid ink that comes out, um, and there's a few places where you can get those kind of silver pens, and then choose where on the object you're going to put the you know kind of draw the pen on the on the surfaces that are most likely to have been worn down. Um, that's the super simple way to do it. There's a whole bunch of other ways to do it as well, but that's the quickest way I think that you can that you can do that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, that's just a very quick answer. And people are saying in chat, yes, <laughs> I'd like to see you doing some prop building working. So maybe. Uh, instead of releasing a um, an edited video this weekend, I might do a live tomorrow um, uh, of me uh, working in the workshop on my uh, on my proton pack. Maybe I'll do that, and we can chat about my pack and how I'm doing it. I'm working on the electronics at the moment on that, so maybe that'd be a a, a fun thing. Uh, let's see uh, what else are people saying here. Oh yeah, Gavin was just saying about it would be cool to meet Rick Moranis and Rebecca saying that. It would be very cool. Who is the coolest person that I've met on the streets of New York? Um, hmm. The most surprising person I met on the street in New York was Bob Gale, the writer of Back to the Future. And I totally mistook him for Robert Zemeckis, which was incredibly embarrassing. Um, so that, that was like the most surprising thing. I've seen J-Lo. <laughs> in New York. <laughs> I was at work and J-Lo was just rocking up. Uh, so, yeah. Um, the coolest person I've ever met in New York City, though, is Steven Spielberg. Um, but then I did also meet Jason Reitman in New York, which was cool, and met Gil Kennan in New York and met McKenna Grace in New York. So it's kind of hard to choose because all these folks were really, really cool. But um, J-Lo was a surprise. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> uh, let's see, uh, right, Ecto saying, New York is scary, poor Moranis just randomly got bonked to the floor by a random person, I know, that was crazy, he was just kind of punched when he was walking to his apartment, um, uh, Rebecca saying, I really respect the, the logic of the experience versus the signature, yeah, um, that's just, I, I would, much rather build a connection with somebody than um, grab their signature. Um, I, I, you know, I'm interested in them. I'm interested in who they are, and I'm interested in having that experience of speaking to them. Um, I feel like that's a like real, if that make if that makes sense. Um, uh, I recently replaced the hose and the connectors for my Haslab pack. It's definitely a better connection now. Okay, cool. Yeah, um, the Haslab packs are great. And, um, you know, I love... The great thing about Ghostbusters kit is that you can just mod it and make it your own and, and improve it. It's so much fun. Uh, where did you learn to work on these things? What's my background? So, Rebecca, I was talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, I do have a filmmaking background. Um, but very much an independent filmmaking background, which is all about, you know, just doing stuff myself <laughs> and having to learn it as I go along. I do have a bit of an art background as well and a creativity background, but just I'm just 
try stuff. Sometimes I don't know how to do stuff and I want to find out how to do it and I just kind of give it a go and sometimes I fail and sometimes it goes okay. <laughs> uh, and I think, yeah, quite a few people are saying, yes, I should do the live stream tomorrow. So I'll, I'll try and pick a time and post uh, post that so you've got some notice, Rebecca, <laughs> when it's going to be an extra trip. I'd love to replace the hose, uh, but they're pretty pricey. Yeah, I mean, anything to do with modding stuff, especially people that are really focused on getting their packs like perfect. Um, it's really expensive. It can be very expensive to, to do that kind of stuff. Um, but, um, you know, I, I think 3D printing is is actually reasonably cheap these days. <laughs> I knew my iPad was going to run out. Now I'm going to have to read questions from the screen, which, as you know, last week was an interesting experience. Um, but yeah, um, I, I think... Um, 3D printing can really help. And uh, I was having a chat with um, one of the folks that was on the live stream last week. We were talking on Instagram. Um, he is doing an incredible job of collecting all the original pieces that the proton packs would, and, and other props were designed around. Um, and it's a big process getting hold of those things. And one of the things I was saying to him on, on the chat we were having uh, yesterday was that... Um, you know, you can 3D print some of these things or some of these parts. You can get alternatives. And then, you know, when you're ready to upgrade or when you're ready to kind of go to the next step, you can kind of move forward in that way. So I think that's a really, uh, really good, a really good thing about today is that the, is the, the ability to at least 3D print stuff. Right, I'm getting close to the camera here so I can read the chat. Uh, let's see. Um, Oh, Rebecca's like, that's amazing. You definitely give an artist energy and a creative. That's really kind of you. Thank you. I, I get passionate about that stuff. Genuinely, I love building stuff and I love anything that's about the creative process of the movie. The part that really excites me about movies is how the heck do they do it um, and how it's made. And, uh, you know, if I could run an entire channel just about doing behind the scenes, if people would let me onto their sets to talk about what they're doing and why they're doing it. That would be my dream job, to, to just get excited with folks that do this stuff. I would love that. Uh, Gavin is saying, I'm a fan of Lego and I want to get the Lego Ghostbusters Firehouse, but it's really hard to find. It is hard to find, you are correct. Uh, Rebecca, oh no, uh, last week you uh, got underwater and underwear mixed up. I did, <laughs> yeah, I did indeed. That was embarrassing. Uh, still the funniest moment on the live to date. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, uh, yeah, and, and this is what happens when I have to stare at the tiny text on the bottom of my phone here. Uh, Eric, hello. Welcome. Uh, uh, Fukunomi is saying it's pricey to replace the hose if you want it to be durable um, and stand doing volunteer events and conventions. Yeah. It's a really interesting thing, you know. Um, I have two packs. I have the Spirit Halloween pack, which is a very lightweight pack. It's good to look at, um, but it, it's not perfect as a replica. But And when I go out to do stuff, I often take that pack because it's light and it's easy for me to carry. And I think the one I'm building at the moment, the 3D printed one, I'm probably going to keep that at home. That's going to be my like perfect pack because one of the things I want to do here in the in the geeky basement, in fact, this will be one of the projects I'll probably start to get out for YouTube and here is that I want to create a Ghostbusters corner. So I want to create a place with a pack and, and the uniform hung up and stuff that looks like a little section of the firehouse. That's what I would love to do down here. Um, Ector Trip, uh, do you live stream on your phone a lot in New York? What do you use? Yeah, I just use my iPhone when I'm in New York. Um, that's the easiest way to live stream. And I found actually that with the portrait live streaming, which YouTube are using a lot, well, they've just introduced this. They didn't used to have a portrait live streaming mode. Um, YouTube pushed the portrait live stream much further than they do um, a regular live stream. I think because the live stream appears in the reel feed or in the, uh, do they call it reels on YouTube? What do they call it? Shorts, in the shorts feed. Um, and so a lot more people will see it um, and it comes up to them. And also if people are on YouTube on their phone, they see it more than they would if they were on a desktop computer. So I, that's why I've adopted this, this form of live streaming. Um, 
let's see, Rebecca, uh, I did see that Target had an Ecto-1 Lego this past week, but it was 250. That doesn't surprise me. But that's maybe so Target's the place to look, Gavin. Um, Gavin's saying, I had the Spirit Halloween pack and the clip or V clip for the wand to the pack broke uh, and I uh, had to fix it. It's really hard to get it back on. Yeah, that the the spirit pack does have some weaknesses. The other thing that's a weakness on that pack is the ion arm, which is you know the piece that sticks out with the antenna on the side, and that is one of the most easy to break things <laughs> on that pack. <clears throat> I actually had to fix mine with some epoxy uh, to to make sure it wouldn't come off anymore. Um, so yeah, I uh, um, packs are delicate. They're delicate, unless you've got one of the stunt packs, which is made of <laughs> made of foam. Um, let's see, uh, Rebecca, uh, that would be great. Uh, turn it into a mini series on your page, Ghostbusters Corner Renovations. There you go. Yeah, I'll be on my uh, be on my playlist that I've called Ghostbusters Fans Only. My wife says that Ghostbusters Fans Only is a little bit exclusive. Like people like, oh, it's only for Ghostbusters fans, but. I kind of, that was the intention to kind of make it a little bit like, well, I, I can look there, even though I'm not a fan. But I don't, maybe maybe I got that wrong, but, but, but it'll probably be on that playlist. <laughs> Stephanie's saying it does appear in the shorts feed. Yes, it does, which is great. So I think what happens when you live stream in this format is that you get a lot more people over the period of the stream than you would if you stream in the other direction. Um, but people um, pop in and out more, I think is what happens. That's what I what I hear from others that do it this way. Uh, Skelton, uh, what do you think would have happened if Ghostbusters was more violent? I probably would have been, I mean, originally, I think it would have been harder for the film to capture the audience it captured, which was, which is the people that that are the huge fan base now. A lot of that fan base is made up from people that got into Ghostbusters when they were kids in the 80s and 90s. And so uh, I was not saying that's all of the fan base because it's not. I know that there's folks on the stream that are all of all ages that are into Ghostbusters. But I think if it was more violent, I think it probably would have not reached that audience, probably, in, in my opinion. But I might be wrong. Um, uh, Tiskanomi is saying, sometimes you can find the Ecto-1 for under 200. I think I got lucky on Amazon. I got mine for 180. Occasionally, yeah. It's probably hard to find anything Ghostbusters cheap at the moment because of the interest in it. Give it another couple of months and I think the price of a lot of stuff will come down. Um, Sophia, hi Sophia, welcome to the chat. Uh, Stephanie, um, you can also get more trolls when you do live stream in vertical, <laughs> that is true. It's not been my experience this evening. It has been my experience when I, I streamed from the firehouse a couple of... Um, weeks ago, and um, I don't know what time of day, I, I, it was during the day, and um, I've, and again, those of you that are familiar with my channel will have probably seen me, I've live streamed from the firehouse quite a lot, um, but there was one day, it must have been the time of day, I don't know, but there were obviously a lot of people that were just trying to get me to shout things like goat and other stuff. <laughs> in the street in New York. So I was like, okay, I'm done with this. I'm gonna stop live streaming now. Uh, but there you go. Yeah, uh, Gavin, uh, the red wire on the front of the wand broke when I got it out. Just had to glue that back on. Uh, yeah, the spirit pack. In fact, my Spengler wand, the red wire on the front broke. That's quite a weakness there. I've actually got to repair mine as well. Uh, Stephanie's asking how I am. I'm good, thank you. I'm a bit tired now. I've been live streaming for 163 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a marathon, this live stream, but it's been fun. It go the time goes really, really quickly. Uh, so I'm doing good, thank you. Uh, oh, Stephanie, you were there for that live stream, were you? When people were like <laughs> telling me to do weird, weird stuff. That's funny. Uh, um, Skamomi says, Un unless you're talking about Lord of the Rings, then you would want trolls. <laughs> Yes, we would not want trolls unless we're talking about Lord of the Rings. I'm happy to talk about Lord of the Rings, though. I'm a fan of Lord of the Rings. In fact, in fact, there is a plan, a possible plan uh, for this channel to do some Lord of the Rings stuff later in the year, possibly even from New Zealand, possibly. Um, if you're interested in any of that stuff, 
you're interested in Weta Workshop and what Weta Workshop do, do um, and some of the stuff in New Zealand at Lord of the Rings and you'd like to see some of that on that channel, let me know, hit the heart button. Um, but that's something that we're possibly planning uh, for in the next in the next while. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Uh, okay, uh, let's see. Um, Gavin is saying, should I play Ghostbusters Spirits Unleashed? Yes. Simple answer. Yes, play it. <laughs> uh, Skelton, uh, have a good rest of your day. Take care, Skelton. Thank you for being around for so long uh, on the stream today. Um, cool. Well, I think I'm probably going to call it there. Um, thank you so much. Um, I know people have been in and out, and um, it's been great to chat with you guys. Um, it's been really fun. And thank you for being, uh, you know, great followers of this channel. And those of you that are new here, welcome. It's been great to chat with you and um, just have a good time, really. It's, it's always fun, and I appreciate it. Thanks for your feedback. Thanks for your great questions. Thanks for giving me some answers about stuff. If I do a live stream tomorrow, I'll try and give you some notice. Uh, but it will definitely be probably Proton Pack related from my workshop. Um, and if you've got any other ideas for... Um, what would make a great member area for this channel, the kind of things you'd like to see, what would make it worth you parting with your precious money to join a membership on this channel? You know, let me know. You can pop it in comments after this live is finished. Um, and, uh, you know, let, let me know what would, would be worth it for you because I'm, I'm only interested in doing it if it's something that is going to be of value, right? I don't want to just do it for the sake of it. I want it to be good. So um, if you've got ideas or things that you'd like to see that you think would be worth it, and some of you already told me those things, uh, let me know. Um, and that's something that um, I'm going to start thinking about doing. So guys, great talking to you. Lovely chatting with you. Stephanie, maybe I'll see you in McDonald's <laughs> at some point. And um, uh, yeah, and you're welcome. You're ver I'm very happy uh, to have answered your questions and uh, really fun chatting with you guys uh, tonight. Have a great weekend, and uh, hopefully we'll see you on another live stream tomorrow where we'll do some, some stuff in the workshop and we can chat about uh, techniques and how to make things work and how to do stuff, and we can just talk about props, which would be super fun. I'd love to do that. So, uh, yeah, I'll try not to let Slimer get me. Thank you. You know, that's another thing I need. I need a Slimer. I don't have a Slimer. Maybe that's, a, that's another movie. <laughs> now Michael's thinking of Mickey D's. I know, that's made me hungry as well. I need to go eat some food. I haven't eaten anything this evening yet. It's uh, it's time for some New York pizza. That's why we ended this live stream last week. And people were very kind to... <laughs> people donated money to the channel to get me New York pizza. <laughs> All right, folks. Well, take care. Enjoy. And uh, I will see you guys hopefully tomorrow on the next live stream. Have a good night. <laughs>